Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto kill Orochimaru during the Chunin exams. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. It had been so unearthly painful. It was like lava crawling over his skin and consuming his mind and body. He could feel the mental crack inside of his gut and the fiery unleashing of the demon sealed deep within him. Death was coming. Surely his whole body would burst into a thousand disgusting pieces as the Kayubi no Kitsune thrust its way out of him. It was a gruesome aspect that Namikaze Naruto never wanted to think about again. He waited for death to consume him and he could only hope that Sasuke could control it with his Sharingan. If not, the entire village was done for. Naruto had been the only seal master left in Konoha after the legendary Jiraiya had fallen to the hands of his former student. Death was a strange thing, was it not? The way it haunted a person day in and day out just waiting for the time to strike. It was kind of like the Grim Reaper with his silver-bladed scythe that collected the souls from the inanimate bodies. One swipe and it was gone. The lava sensation that had drenched him was gone and he felt as though he was falling into a black abyss, leaving him with no idea of where he might land. Would he go to hell? Or would it be heaven? Did either of them even exist? He'd probably be well on his way to hell for asking such a question. Naruto inwardly snorted. Sins, he certainly had plenty of those. He didn't think he'd wind up in heaven anyway. Enjoying with a man was perhaps an even bigger offense than questioning God. He laughed. He was dying and he was thinking about with men. Typical. Hitaki Kakashi had certainly rubbed off on him. As he waited for some sort of end to come he felt excruciatingly tired. His whole body, whether it was physical or mental, lagged with a sudden pressure. He would guess that he was at the end now. His life was ending and his soul must be quivering to leave his corpse. Naruto didn't fight it and he gave in, letting the blackness swallow him whole. Naruto could have sworn he was supposed to have died. In fact, he had been positive about that fact. Death was never wrong and so why was it that Naruto could hear the familiar buzzing of his alarm clock? Sapphire eyes snapped open to the light of the day. His forehead wrinkled as his thin blonde brows knitted together in confusion. Why did that ceiling look so familiar? He shifted, feeling no aches or pains in his body and he gasped when his eyes fell on an old alarm clock that he had thrown away two years ago. Was this a dream? Naruto wasn't sure but as he sat up and gazed around the room, his eyes widened. His heart was racing viciously when he realized that he was in his old one-bedroom apartment. How very odd, Naruto thought rubbing his eyes in the hope that this wasn't real. He pushed the orange covers down to his feet and frowned. God, had he really liked orange that much? He wondered and tugged on pieces of his shoulder-length blonde hair. After he found out the truth about his father, a man he had looked up to for so long, Naruto had decided to grow his hair out in honor of both him and Jiraiya. The jagged ends resembled the front of Jiraiya's hair without the long winding ponytail in the back. Instead, the ponytail barely passed his shoulders and was usually pinned back by a band. Alright, what was his 18-year-old body doing in his old apartment? He was supposed to be dead. Deftly, Naruto kicked his slender legs off the bed and touched the hardwood floor. They creaked with his lightweight as he reached his hand out to stop the insistent buzzing. Thanks Gama stop, he said, reciting his old words to his trusty alarm. He'd really loved that alarm clock, even if it was childish. He stood and passed by the full-length mirror. Naruto frowned when he backed up and stared at his reflection. Okay, everything was still in place except for the fact that he was wearing pajamas that were way too little on his frame. A tight white t-shirt rode up his slender but well-toned chest and the pants were like blue and bright orange with a ramen cup print. Kami-sama, what the hell is going on? He asked only just noticing the stiffness under his armpits from the fabric. He continued to stare at his matured, tan reflection before something in the mirror caught his attention and he whirled around and gasped, horrified, at the calendar on the wall. No, no, no. Naruto declared to the silent air. No, he repeated quietly. No, he rushed over to it and ripped it off the wall and glared at it. It couldn't have been November 12, 2002. That was impossible. A flurry of curse words left his mouth as he dropped the destroyed calendar to the ground. When he backed up he nearly shrieked like a girl when his back touched a hard chest. He whirled around and lost his balance. Holy shit, Naruto yelled instead. As pale arms reacted to his predestined fall, 
a hint of a smirk actually displayed upon the S-Class Nen's usually apathetic face. Good morning, Naruto-kun. You grew up well, Uchiha Itachi greeted. Blood-red eyes with black spinning commas seemed to gently pierce his own. Aitachi-san? Naruto breathed out. The seal broke. Naruto swallowed. Madara. Yes, I expected we would fail the first time. We? The blonde queried. Itachi-san, what in the hell is going on? He demanded. Why do you seem to know what the hell is happening to me? Why am I in my 12-year-old pajamas, in my baby apartment, with my baby gama stop clock and why the fuck is it November 12, 2002? His voice unconsciously rose. Another flicker of amusement caused Naruto to scowl and wiggle out of the man's arms. You damn missing nen, tell me what's going on. HN, Itachi didn't answer and instead he turned and gracefully walked out of the small bedroom. His Akatsuki cloak with the red clouds brushed along the hardwood floors as he left. Naruto's eyes narrowed. Uchiha's were all a pain in the ass. He thought, Uchiha Itachi, don't you dare walk away from me. I see your amusement, zombie boy. He rushed out of the room and gasped as he collided with Itachi's tall form. Even with Naruto being 18, he still hadn't gained much height. He was 5 foot 6 and would probably never see the pretty number 7 in his lifetime. Personally, Naruto blamed the Kyubi seal for his height. He had studied it long enough to know what side effects he'd receive besides whisker markings and acute hearing. You bastard. Itachi looked over his shoulder, face expressionless but those eyes spoke volumes. Breakfast, Naruto-kun, were his only two words before heading into the kitchen. Hey, at least give me your damn cloak, he whined. I'm uncomfortable here. Itachi stopped at the end of the hall and eloquently tugged the tie of his cloak, undoing it to reveal relaxed black leather pants, a black belt, and a black tank top with a gray fishnet shirt over the top of it. He tossed it to Naruto, who caught it. Thank you, Naruto mumbled rushing into the room to take off the painted on pajamas. He wrapped himself in the cloak, relieved that it was big enough to wrap around him twice. When he came out, Itachi was already pulling food out of the refrigerator. Naruto frowned, wondering when the Uchiha would speak. He knew now that Itachi was not a bad guy. In fact, he was a good brother. I'm sorry, Naruto said standing behind the counter. Itachi gazed at him briefly before pulling some bread toward him. You know what I'm sorry about, don't you? Saying those things about how I'd be a better brother and stuff. He felt embarrassed even recalling it. Itachi had done all that he could. They were true, Itachi said emotionlessly. No they weren't, Naruto said opening his refrigerator to find some orange juice. I was an overly emotional brat and I think I still am. But I've gotten better. I don't jump to as many conclusions as I used to. He eyed the orange juice distrustfully and all of his senses screamed to put it down when the date said drink by. November 25, 2002. He turned the cap and smelled it. His sense of smell had always been a big part of his instincts. He felt Itachi's eyes on him but refused to look back. Good, I guess. He pulled a watermelon decorated glass from the cupboard and eyed it like the orange juice, but for an entirely different reason. I had bad taste as a kid. HN, the Uchiha agreed. Naruto stuck out his tongue at the raven haired man before pouring a glass. Okay so it's 2002 and I'm in my little apartment. Where's my 12 year old self? He was consumed by you, Itachi answered. Naruto swallowed the tangy liquid and frowned at Itachi. Excuse me? A combination of genjutsu and sealing. I used the chakra I collected from the Kayubi no Kitsune and manipulated it with Pain's Rinnegan. Pain knows? Naruto asked with a deep frown. I don't think so. But for once Naruto saw the uncertainty in his eyes. Good. So, we're in the past to change the future? Itachi nodded and even if Naruto didn't see him, he could feel it. Good, perhaps this time I can save Jiraiya. Itachi paused and stared up at him with a question in his eyes. Naruto saw the question. Pain killed Jiraiya right before you died. I fought Pain and nearly killed him, but I refused. Why? I didn't want the hatred to live on, so I spared his life. He somehow felt remorse and he revived all the people he had killed in Konoha when he was hunting for me. He died after that. Conan quit Akatsuki. Itachi didn't respond to Naruto's explanation and instead finished breakfast, which was French toast with cinnamon and sugar. What do you drink? Naruto asked trying to ignore the stab of pain in his chest. Juice is fine. Naruto nodded and pulled out a strawberry decorated cup. 
I need new cups. HN. Another agreeing Uchiha noise. Thank you, Itachi-san. They ate. Naruto talked while Itachi simply listened. Naruto wasn't fond of silence considering when he was younger he lived in it for a very long time. They were halfway through breakfast when a thought occurred to Naruto. Um, if I'm supposed to be 12 what are we going to say when people see that I've suddenly grown up? Henge. Naruto sulked. I like the way I look now, he whined. I finally feel like me and Kami-sama. I do not want to wear that damn orange jumpsuit. Don't. I don't have much else, Naruto said tugging on a strand of his hair once more. When I was little, I did all I could to get the villagers to see me as something other than the Kayubi vessel. Even before I knew what I had in me, I was an outsider. So I did things to get noticed. That's where my idiot acting became a part of my personality. I didn't grow out of it until after Jiraiya died. That's when I started changing. He didn't know why he was talking about it, but Itachi didn't seem to mind. Instead, he was staring at Naruto intently. When they finished their breakfast, Naruto took both of their plates. I will return in an hour, Itachi said and before Naruto could turn back around, Itachi had used Shunshin to leave. Naruto had some time to ponder everything alone and it was a good thing he did, because all of the information Itachi had given him came back in full force. Call him a dumbass but he really hadn't let it sink in until now. He nearly dropped the plates as he gripped the counter. Shit, what time was it? He checked the clock and found that it was just past 7 in the morning. Good, he had 2 hours before he had to actually meet up with Team 7 and Kakashi. Ah, damn. Naruto moaned and bowed his head. Did he have to go through that shit again? There was no way that Naruto could act like the overactive child that he once had. He still had the energy and cheer from his childhood, but Naruto was pretty certain that he'd shaved off the whole obnoxious factor, unless he got to talking. He left the kitchen and went to the bathroom to wash up. He peered into the mirror at the prominent fox whiskers that lined across his cheek. He looked identical to his father, except he was tanner, smaller, and the obvious whiskers. His face, however, was sharper, resembling his mother when it came to the jawline. He obviously didn't have his father's build, which would have been nice. Naruto didn't question how Itachi got in and out of Konoha. The man was a master at disguise. When Itachi did return, Naruto was brushing his teeth at the time and followed Itachi to his bedroom to see that the man had eight bulging bags which were placed on his bed. HN? He modeled the famous Uchiha word considering his mouth was stuffed with an orange toothbrush. Yours, he answered without blinking. Naruto rolled his eyes good-naturedly. One word sentences really sucked, he thought going back to the bathroom to spit the toothpaste out. His tongue was going numb. Itachi stood in the doorway and handed him a gray and black outfit. Thanks, Naruto said taking them in his arms. Henge afterwards. Naruto groaned at that, but Itachi didn't say anything more and walked out so that he could close the door. Comfort, Naruto thought as he sighed and gazed at himself in the mirror. He was wearing a set of pants identical to Itachi's, except they buttoned while Itachi's zipped and tied. The shirt was long-sleeved, black and gray and the shoes were black shinobi sandals to be worn with wraps rather than socks. He would have to remember to use a seal to make the clothes shrink with his body. It would take a bit of chakra, but Naruto had enough. Naruto came out with Itachi's cloak on his arm and found the man piling a small black pouch full of shuriken. Better, Itachi said. Naruto handed him his cloak back. Thanks for the cloak. He took the offered black band and slipped his hair back leaving the tails by his ear. You are only required to look 12. Speculation will get them nowhere, Itachi told him. Can I keep my hair? Naruto asked looking hopeful. Itachi inclined his head. I need to create the seal. I can do it, Naruto said smirking and reaching under his bed to pull out a box of scrolls, ink, and a brush. Itachi watched him and Naruto couldn't hide the smug smirk as he elegantly twirled the soaked brush creating perfect calligraphic seals. I didn't learn to be a seal master for nothing, he said happily. I was just about to receive the mastery when that bastard relative of yours attacked. I would have had it sooner, but the old bastards on the council kept refusing me until Ba-chan, Kakashi Sensei, and Sasuke stood up for me. Itachi placed down a black bracelet. Use this as the henge holder. Once the seals were in place on paper, Itachi took the brush and ink and observed Naruto making the seals in a flash. Tiger. Lion, Sun, Rebirth. A flash of white light erupted from the room. 
The black bracelet had turned white, it shuddered and then went back to black. Naruto sighed and slipped it on and at the same time he redid the hand signs, causing his entire body to transform. He became a lot shorter, but his hair remained and his bright eyes were the same. Though he was tiny and this brought a very small smirk to the Uchiha's face. Naruto glared up at him. This is so degrading, he said and rolled his eyes when he realized how young he sounded. No puberty yet obviously. You remembered your voice. Yes, it would be a little fucked up if a 12-year-old sounded like an 18-year-old, he said sighing and then glancing over his shoulder at the mirror. Naruto had added the clothing into the seal which would have been almost impossible had it not been for Naruto's shadow clones having researched hench sealing for exhaustible hours on end. When Naruto had stated he was a seal master, he wasn't being the least bit arrogant. Itachi eyed him appreciatively before handing him his belt. I must leave now, Naruto-kun, he then said taking his cloak. Are you coming back? Naruto asked suddenly. Itachi paused and tilted his head. Soon. Check your music box later, he said and with a pop his body turned into a hundred cawing crows before darting out the open window. Naruto was left alone to the tender mercy of being a twelve-year-old. He eyed himself critically. Well at least he didn't look like a dead last and he didn't have to act it. If anyone asked, he would chalk it up as the world's largest prank, done by the famous Uzumaki Naruto. His hair and some of the maturity may have remained, because of Naruto skipping purposely over those bits, but he could pass off as 12 considering his voice and height. It would do. Naruto eyed the frog music box that sat innocently on his dresser. He walked over to it and flipped it open and gasped when he saw multiple cash rolls with rubber bands snaked tightly around them. That idiot, Naruto growled and closed the music box. Why did all Uchiha's try to support him or use their money like this? Even Sasuke did it. He rolled his eyes and walked out of the house. He had Team 7 to deal with and it caused him to groan. How would this day turn out? He didn't know exactly, but he did know one thing. He was not going to be the one tied to the pole this time and he was not going to be the one that Kakashi despised most. He frowned deeply as he thought about how Kakashi had treated him for a long time. It was painful and he dreaded going through that again. It was bad enough to make him cry. No one could ever understand what it had been like to be the 12-year-old Naruto trapped in a town who hated him. Hopefully this time Naruto could make a decent impression. The Japanese maples swayed in the morning breeze and the sun was like a thousand diamonds sparkling along the pavement. The gates to the 7th training area grounds came into view. Sasuke was already leaning against the metal fencing, his face just as blank and well adjusted as Itachi's. The only difference was maturity and the fact that Sasuke had a more broody nature while Itachi's was a well-crafted art of no emotion at all. When he looked up, he had a scowl prepared, but it was suddenly lost when he saw Naruto slowly heading his way. Oh, priceless, Naruto thought, wanting to grin widely. Instead, he kept a sly smirk toned down and his blue eyes twinkled as he approached. Morning Sasuke, fangirl show up yet? He asked not missing a beat as Sasuke's left eye twitched. No, Sasuke answered raking his eyes over Naruto's frame. He pursed his lips together and it was obvious that he was having a hell of a lot of trouble trying to hold down the curiosity. When Naruto didn't offer anything of his own free will, the curiosity rose even greater. Naruto stood at Sasuke's side imitating the youngest Uchiha, but instead of staring straight ahead like he was angry with the world, he gazed up at the blue sky and white clouds. I see a duck, he announced as Sasuke followed his gaze and sneered. Figured you would. Naruto merely smiled. A ducky. Sasuke frowned at the offending sky and then after a minute said, a kanai. Ooh, could be a double-bladed one. H-N. E. Sasuke-kun. Sasuke stiffened when bright pink flashed before both of their vision and Sakura practically bowled Sasuke over as she tried to reach for him. Deftly, he stepped aside and Naruto had only just moved to keep her from falling on him. She paused however when she saw Naruto and her green eyes narrowed. What did you do, idiot? She asked with a sneer as she flicked her long hair. Naruto blinked once at her before breaking out into a bright grin. Good morning, Sakura-san. How are you this morning? I hope you're doing well, I think our sensei is going to be late, like yesterday. What do you think? Her eyes went from narrowed to surprised, and then she began to goggle. Huh? Sasuke snorted discreetly. Idiot. Yes, Sasuke-kun, he is. 
Sakura said turning her eyes on him and batting her lashes. I meant you, Sasuke said causing her well-groomed face to fall. But Sasuke-kun, Naruto snickered behind his hand, plopped down on the ground, and went back to cloud watching. Sasuke was now standing off to the side a little away from both Sakura and him. The pink-haired girl looked saddened and every topic she brought up to Sasuke was silenced with a lethal stare. Ah, the good old days, Naruto thought dryly. A kitten, he said suddenly causing Sakura to look at him and then up at the sky. With a ribbon around its neck, Sakura flashed Sasuke a tentative look and saw that he too was staring at the skies. You sure it's a kitten? It's what I see, Naruto said idly. What if it's a dog? It's got pointed ears and a tail. Could be a fox, Sakura rebuked logically. Naruto smiled at that and he wanted to chuckle. Yes, it could be you're right. She smirked smugly and Naruto realized it was the first half-decent conversation he'd had with her. It was a good start, he thought. Naruto wondered how long it would last. So, uh, Naruto, what did you do to yourself? Sakura asked, sounding a little bit nicer. Naruto's smile became so wide it was mischievous and instead of making him look like he was mentally challenged, it made his entire face glow like an angel. At least this was what Sasuke thought. Well, he was about to answer and almost laughed when Kakashi chose that particular moment to pop in. Yo, you're late, Sakura shrieked turning her glare fully on him. Yeah, about that, I got lost on the road of life. Naruto said causing Kakashi to turn and his one gray eye to widen when he saw his weakest student sitting on the ground with a calm, cool, and even cooler expression on his face. He had one knee propped up with his wrist dangling off it. No orange, he was in black and gray and he looked much too startling for a 12-year-old. His face even looked a little different than it had yesterday, which completely set Kakashi on his guard. Isn't that right, Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked cheerfully. Kakashi's usual emotionless self had transformed into shock and the only thought that crossed his mind was, Minato-sensei in angelic form? Yes, Naruto-kun, Kakashi said turning his gaze away from the cheerful stranger that he definitely had not met yesterday. He could see the confusion on both Sakura and even the thoughtfully hidden expression on Sasuke's face. Well, shall we get started? You bet, Naruto said bouncing up and dusting his pants off elegantly. He skipped toward the grounds and was followed much slower by the rest of his team. It certainly felt good to get the one up, Naruto thought childishly. Perhaps he would enjoy this more than he thought? Naruto bounced up onto the wooden pole that he had once been tied to. He balanced himself before coming down to sit, his legs swinging around him. Slowpokes, Naruto called out playfully. Sakura scowled at him. It's much too early to have that much energy. Welcome to the 7th area training grounds. Today we are going to do a survival test. Naruto tuned the explanations out as he observed each of his teammates before homing in on Kakashi. Naruto could feel the man's shock when he saw him. He knew he looked like Minato and he wondered if Kakashi saw that considering Naruto's father had been his former Junin sensei. These bells, the familiar tinkle of them drew Naruto out of his thoughts and he smiled gently at the two white abominations. That's it? Sasuke asked in a sneer. Yep. That's all you've got to do, Kakashi said tying them to his belt. You capture them, you pass. Oh and the one who doesn't get one doesn't get to eat lunch. Naruto tried not to roll his eyes at the dramatic words. Sakura whimpered, hand on her stomach. Sasuke didn't even flinch at Kakashi's words and Naruto decided to get their attention. Say start already. Kakashi turned his one eye onto Naruto and it remained there for several seconds. Naruto didn't take his gaze away. Start. Pink, black, and yellow blurs were all Kakashi saw. Good, they hid themselves, he whispered having expected Naruto to remain behind. Naruto followed Sasuke and when the Uchiha had snuggled under the bushes, Naruto pounced on his back straddling Sasuke. His hands slapped over the boy's mouth to muffle his startled cry. He leaned in and whispered into his ear, this is a loyalty test. It's not about the bells, it's about whether we can work together as a team. Sasuke swallowed and Naruto took his hand away and rolled to the side, lying next to him on his back. Black eyes peered into blue. Who the hell are you, and what have you done with Naruto? Sasuke asked sharply. Naruto grinned. Let's worry about that later and worry about our Junin sensei and those fucking bells, shall we? 
Sasuke couldn't help but stare at Naruto in shock. Yeah, let's do this. It was an hour later and Sakura was tied to the pole, but Naruto used his kunai to slice her down the second she was pinned. What are you doing, Naruto-kun? Kakashi demanded sharply. Naruto didn't even flinch at Kakashi's false tone. Sasuke tugged the rope away from the girl's shoulders. She sniffed as the tears left her eyes. She's our teammate. If you want to tie her up, you have to tie the both of us up too. He held out his hand and she didn't even hesitate. She latched onto Naruto and he helped her up. Thank you Naruto, Sakura said before turning to Sasuke, Sasuke-kun. What say you, Kakashi-sensei? Pass or fail? Naruto asked cocking his head to the side. You pass. Naruto-kun, you seem to understand this test. Of course, Naruto said, it's not about the bells, and it's not about any fancy jutsu that any of us can perform. It's about loyalty and teamwork. If we don't have that the whole team dies, right Kakashi-sensei? That's right, Kakashi said. You may leave now. Be here tomorrow at 8. Sakura whooped. We passed. She squealed jumping up and down. Sasuke gave the typical, HN, while Naruto chuckled softly. But I have to know, Naruto. Kakashi stepped up to him. Naruto grinned and released Sakura. Uzumaki Naruto, the world's greatest prankster. The dead last, orange-wearing, ramen-loving idiot who screams about Hokage this and Hokage that, he summed up taking a step away from his teammates. My, my, how could a vessel like me be seen as anything but a dead last? He asked smile disappearing. It was replaced by a glacial expression. Sakura and Sasuke frowned identically because they didn't understand. However, Kakashi froze and from the wide circle indent in his mask, Naruto could bet that his mouth was open slightly. Naruto didn't give anyone a chance to reply as he disappeared. Naruto's eyes narrowed when he walked in the door to an orange home. There were things that would have to change around here, he thought with his hands on his hips. He wondered where he should start when a soft knock at the door jolted him out of his mind. A visitor? He could use someone cheerful right now. Naruto skipped over to the door and jerked it open. He gasped when he saw his former sensei standing there with a wide smile. His brown ponytail pulled into a top knot and relaxed stance caused Naruto to launch himself onto the tall, thin man. Uruka sensei Oh my, Naruto-kun. What did you do? Uruka's hand affectionately fell onto the top of his soft blonde hair and pulled him back to get a look at him. You look like you grew. Naruto beamed and tugged the man he perceived as a father into the apartment. Well, Uruka sensei I decided that I don't want to be Hokage. I just want to be myself. Shocked and a little worried, Uruka cupped Naruto's cheeks. You can be whatever it is you want to be, Naruto-kun. If Hokage is what you want, you will achieve it. I don't want it, Naruto said shrugging a small shoulder. I only ever wanted it so people would stop being cruel to me. Uruka had a sad look on his face. Ah, Naruto-kun, I'm so sorry. It's not your fault, Uruka-sensei. It's because of you that I didn't turn out like a rotten little shit who thought the entire village should burn. True, I don't hold any love for them but eventually their prejudices will be torn down. You've really grown up, Naruto-kun. I can't believe it. You better believe it, Naruto said beaming and crossing his arms over his chest. Chuckling, Uruka pulled him close. How was your training? I heard you had Hitaki Kakashi. He's a rather difficult man to please. Naruto snorted at that. You're telling me, the one-eyed idiot, but, ah we passed. Uruka cheered and lifted Naruto who gasped and laughed lightly. I take it you're happy? I'm always happy for you, Naruto-kun, Uruka said into his ear. I'm so proud of you. Thanks Uruka-sensei. Hey are you doing anything right now? Besides holding my favorite person, nope, he answered. Well, I saved up some money that G-sama gives me every month, Naruto said hoping he could get by with that excuse, and well, Orange is driving me bonkers, can you help me change this place around? Uruka threw his head back and laughed loudly. Finally tired of Orange, I see? Very, Naruto admitted towing the ground. Uruka tugged against the lock of Naruto's hair. He didn't understand how Naruto had changed so much, his face and hair seemed so much different and more mature. It was beautiful and Naruto seemed to be a young man having grown out of his childhood way too early. Uruka knew that it was the fault of the villagers and the Kayubi locked inside. Naruto was aging mentally, his innocent, yet knowing, 
Gaze could penetrate and haunt anyone who captured his heart and Naruto had definitely captured Aruka's. What were you thinking of getting? Black, gray, blue, dark red, any color but orange, Naruto stated as he scratched his head. He smiled to himself. He knew that Aruka was confused but he also knew that his sensei would take it that he was growing up, however big of a leap it was. By the next morning, Naruto awoke to his gama stop clock and pushed his lovely dark blue covers down to his feet. It was time to start d rank missions. Splendid, Naruto thought not so happy about repeating that process. It was funny how Naruto could still surprise Kakashi when the man appeared late. Some poor old lady's pussy was up a tree and you just had to be the gracious shinobi and retrieve it didn't you, Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked with his eyes full of innocence. Sasuke actually choked as Sakura giggled outright. If Kakashi hadn't been around brat 12-year-olds, Naruto knew that he would have fainted. The days turned into weeks when it came to D-rank missions. Oh, they were annoying. He was an 18-year-old Junin, sage, seal master and one of the most famous defenders of Konoha being degraded to childish housework or babysitting children and animals. It didn't help that people treated him like the 12-year-old he was and it made him grind his teeth and hiss like a cat when no one was paying attention. He glared nastily at his bracelet as he went over to help Sakura pull up some weeds. All of this time Hitaki Kakashi had been sitting on their customer's white fence pretending to be interested in his Icha Icha book when in reality he was observing his strange little blonde student with unshakable interest. What had Kakashi missed between day 1 and day 2 of meeting Uzumaki Naruto? On the first day, Naruto showed off as an idiotic, prank-filled, careless brat who had no respect for an adult and showed absolutely no talent at all. He had also been loud and overly obnoxious to the point that Kakashi really wanted to get out of there. His mind had been made up that day, no matter what he was failing them even if Obito's relative was on his team. On the second day, however, Kakashi got a shock in the form of a transformed Naruto. A beautiful 12-year-old Naruto with a hidden mind and a set of abilities that no one had ever witnessed. Kakashi wasn't shocked very often. It took quite a lot, but this really floored him and when Naruto comprehended the task he set for them, Kakashi realized that his transformed look was not just materialism but it was the parting words that captured him the most. Kakashi would never forget that glacial look, the set jaw, and the cold contempt in his voice. It was jaw-dropping and eye-opening for sure. Of course Sasuke and Sakura were too young to understand what Naruto had meant, but Kakashi knew very well he was talking about Kayubi no Kitsune. Kakashi had actually been made into a fool and by a 12-year-old at that. If there was anything that could get his attention it was this and so here he was watching Naruto as he twitched and glared randomly as though being treated like a child was the most bothersome thing in the world. He knew from experience that 12-year-old boys hated to be treated like babies, but Naruto's hardened glares were older looking and Kakashi didn't understand why. It was during the second time being put on the mission to capture some fat lady's cat that Naruto looked at Kakashi darkly. Get us something better, Kakashi-sensei. We work together just fine and these are pointless to us now. Kakashi observed Naruto. His eyes were sharp and he had one foot out in front of him while one small hand rested against his hip. His hair fell to his shoulders and Kakashi wondered how the hell he looked so much like the Yandaimi except he was sure that his former sensei didn't look so delicate in the face. He was more confused by his ongoing thoughts. Naruto-kun, these missions are to learn competence with our team. To work together amicably and I think we proved that a couple weeks ago. You could at least pull for a C mission, unless you're trying to tell us that you're not good enough to handle three genin with a simple C rank, EH. Naruto asked with a sugary sweetness to his voice. I mean if you can't handle it just let us know sensei and I'll back off. Sasuke productively turned around as his lip twitched. Sakura was goggling at Naruto while Kakashi heaved a heavy sigh. How did he get manipulated by a 12-year-old? Kakashi didn't speak and instead headed into the Hokage Tower. Naruto smirked as he followed, Sakura and Sasuke behind him. The Hokage sat in his usual place smoking his pipe. He beamed when he saw Naruto. Back already I take it? He hummed pleasantly. Kakashi braced himself. I believe Hokage-sama, that my team is ready for a C-rank mission at the least. Who? Naruto resisted the urge to smirk and instead crossed his arms. 
I'm sure you have something adequate enough for the three of us and the copy ninja to handle. Kakashi's eye widened at Naruto's remark and Sasuke looked at him sharply. How in tune was Naruto? Even the Hokage gazed at Naruto with visible surprise. Well, Naruto-kun, let's see what we have, since Kakashi-san has recommended it I don't see why not. Thank you, Kakashi-sensei, Naruto said sweetly. Kakashi grunted and crossed his arms lazily. It seems that we have a C-ranked mission for you as of now. A bridge builder from the land of waves needs guarding over while he finishes a bridge. Naruto smirked, remembering Tazuna, Tsunami, Inari, Zabuza, Haku, and most of all, Gatu, the manipulative bastard. Naruto would do something different about their fates this time. Zabuza and Haku didn't deserve that, especially an adorable little boy like Haku. Well, bring him on in, Naruto said cheekily. Tazuna didn't change. The scent of sake crawled across the room setting Sakura on edge while Sasuke's frown deepened. Naruto didn't bat an eyelash as he was insulted for being the shortest one. Yeah, I know I'm short and you're a drunken prick, but you can still walk, correct? Tazuna paused and stared at Naruto through his foggy round glasses. UHN was all they got in reply. Naruto-kun, Kakashi said placing his hand on the boy's shoulder, don't get worked up now. I ain't worked up. I know I'm short and I'm proud of it, Naruto said not feeling that it was the total truth. Makes you underestimate me, he said flashing a grin. Hmm, you might be an interesting fella. It was two hours later when Naruto met Tazuna at the front gate. Tazuna was humming and shaking his empty sake bottle. Naruto snatched it out of his hand and handed it to Genma who was the guard at the front gate. You've had enough old man, carrying you wasn't in the contract. Tazuna sneered, what can you defend? Naruto grinned predatorily at him. I can defend even jackasses like you considering I know quite a few things, Tazuna, he said quietly. Like the fact that this c rank mission is full of fucking lies. I know it's higher than that, especially when you have a nasty entrepreneur trying to kill you. Tazuna paled and he staggered back as Naruto chuckled. Don't you worry your drunken head, he said cheerfully. I've been waiting for this and I won't tell until Kakashi Sensei finds out on his own. Tazuna leaned forward and looked at Naruto. You're something else? He breathed when Kakashi appeared beside them. Yo! He said and paused when he saw that Tazuna was staring shrewdly at Naruto. The blonde however was merely smiling back as though he knew something that no one else did. Kakashi-san, Tazuna said respectfully. His eyes flickering to Naruto and back again. Kaka-sensei. Naruto teased and whirled around. Looks as though you're on time our personal cyclops, he taunted as he reached up and flicked the man's forehead protector. Kakashi smirked behind his mask. So it seems, Naruto-kun, he replied finding amusement in Naruto's teasing. It was innocently cute and it made Naruto's blue eyes light up like a Christmas tree. The two stared at each other, momentarily forgetting all about Tazuna who simply stood whistling and looking around him. Their gazes only dropped when Sasuke and Sakura came walking up the path. At the same time they looked away and at their fellow teammates. Naruto gave himself an inward smile. Perhaps things with Kakashi would be a little different in the beginning. He really hoped so. It started exactly as Naruto remembered it. They set off walking slowly through the forests until they came upon a not so innocent puddle. Naruto eyed it and glanced sideways at Kakashi who was doing the same. Apparently, the masked man felt Naruto's stare because they locked eyes and Naruto smirked at him when they passed the puddle. Chains shot up and coiled around their sensei in all four directions and the concealed assassins revealed themselves. As Sakura screamed, Naruto nudged Sasuke. Protect Tazuna. One of their attackers appeared behind Naruto but the boy, expecting it, ducked low and swept his foot around effectively colliding with the assassin's ankles causing him to gasp and go flying down. Sasuke sent out a jet of fire, the Uchiha's famous jutsu, toward the assassin that attempted to attack with a poisoned weapon, making him yelp and jump back in surprise. The second would have been missed had it not been for Sakura's scream, she had rushed in front of Tazuna, Kanai out and fear lacing every inch of her body. Kakashi appeared before the man's fucked up arm could get too close to a defending Sasuke that had jumped in front of them. Naruto couldn't because he had a live one to deal with but he saw with avid amusement as the assassin's neck collided with Kakashi's wrist, effectively cracking it. 
Naruto had never noticed it before but that was quite an interesting way to die. Naruto had pounced on his assassin, Kanai to face and bums sitting on his neck causing him to gurgle painfully. The one Kakashi had hit was dead. Over here, Kaka sensei. He's alive and sleepy. Kakashi paused as he dropped the assassin and saw Naruto sitting idly on the other. Naruto-kun, Tazuna was simply staring at Naruto while Sasuke stood beside him, foot on the assassin's forehead for good measure. Good work with that fire jutsu, Naruto said beaming, it would have sucked had he stuck me with that poison kanai. Kakashi reached down to the attacker who was being used as furniture. Naruto gracefully rolled off and almost laughed when Kakashi watched him out of the corner of his eye. Who do you work for? Kakashi asked calmly. The assassin said nothing as he discreetly slipped his hand into his robes and retrieved an explosive kanai. Naruto immediately saw what was about to happen considering Kakashi's Sharingan was hidden and he had one good eye focused on his enemy's face. He cried out and shoved the copy ninja until they took a tumble. Kaka Sensei. As Naruto and Kakashi rolled together, the concealed attacker blew himself up. Sakura shrieked and fell to her knees. Sasuke eyed the smoke grimly, and Naruto wound up back first on the dirty ground with his sensei on top of him. Everyone was stunned and could do nothing but stare, except for Naruto who felt a little mischievous. I had no idea you enjoyed them so young and fresh, he whispered softly. Kakashi blushed a furious shade of red underneath his mask and looked down at a vindictively smirking Naruto, eyes glittering playfully. Kakashi would have groaned at the bait but that would have induced more dirty jokes at his expense. Naruto-kun, he muttered behind his mask and flipped himself expertly off. He held out his hand for Naruto who beamed and accepted. Good job you guys, he said as Tazuna nodded. Oh, definitely. His eyes were on Naruto the entire time. For a few minutes, Kakashi looked uncomfortable. Naruto was snickering until Sakura growled. How can you laugh at a time like this? We were almost killed. Naruto laughed outright. If you don't laugh, life sucks, he exclaimed, and besides, these people were no match for Kaka-sensei. Kakashi smiled behind his mask at Naruto's kind remark. Well, it looks like we have more than simple burglars after a simple bridge builder, he said placing his hands on his hips and looking over at the guilty looking old man. Assassin ninja attacking a poor bridge builder? I believe Tazuna-san that you haven't been honest with us. It was when they were on the boat sailing across the thick white fog that Tazuna sadly explained everything. Naruto, having heard it before, tuned him out and instead thought about what he was going to do about Zabuza and Haku. Did the two really have to die? Gatu was a nasty man and he wondered if he could talk Haku into persuading Zabuza to turn on him before all hell broke loose. But should he allow them to get away after the first contact? It would be highly suspicious if he, as a 12-year-old, pointed out all the things that their sensei should. He hummed as the mist gathered around them, swallowing their vision. Sakura was shivering next to Sasuke who sat stiffly most likely wishing he had his Sharingan. When they reached the bridge they quietly clambered off. The boat sank with their weight. Naruto held his hand out for Sakura who hesitated only briefly before taking it. Kakashi briefly voiced going back. If we get attacked again this will go from a B rank to an A rank. Well, let's continue on, Naruto spoke up calmly. We should at least try and help, Kakashi sensei. If they haven't the money for a Chunin team then their whole country will be destroyed eventually. Sakura frowned at him while Sasuke gave a HN of agreement. Naruto kun, do you understand? I know what an A rank mission is, Naruto snapped hotly. I might look 12 but don't let that eye of yours deceive you. He winced inwardly as he realized how much he'd said. Sasuke was now staring at him while Sakura looked back and forth not understanding. But Naruto, we're not skilled enough. Sakura moaned. We can't do this, especially you. Naruto knew she hadn't meant it as a jab, but he took it as one anyway. What the hell do you know about me, Sakura-san? He demanded shocking everyone. She'd gone from tolerable to annoying so quickly. He knew she still held a lot of spite toward him from the years of conditioning that she received from her parents but Naruto was sick of her bipolar personality. It was giving him whiplash. We'll stay, Kakashi said above Sakura's beginning wails. His attention honed in on Naruto's cool and rigid form, unless Sasuke votes no. 
He turned to the Uchiha who had a small frown on his face while studying Naruto in much the same way Kakashi was. Stay, Sasuke said firmly. You're lucky, Tazuna-san. We will remain until the bridge is complete. Tazuna sniffed and bowed his head. Thank you, Kakashi-san, Naruto-kun. Naruto felt as though they were being watched and he wondered if it was Haku or Zabuza. Probably the former, the latter was like his old self. He jumped into the fray swinging his strength and infamous blade. Naruto weighed the odds against them. Kakashi should fight him for a while and gain Sasuke and Sakura's respect, he thought. Also, he was sure that the man would want to copy some of those moves. Did that mean that Naruto would play dumb? Not a chance. He still remembered how the clone Zabuza had snuck up on Sakura and Tazuna. He would deal with it then and hatch the old plan he had done with Sasuke. A white bunny rabbit ruffled the bushes sending everyone but Naruto on edge. Five, four, three? Phew, just a rabbit. Sakura said holding her chest. Two, one, I highly doubt that. Naruto muttered quietly from next to Tazuna who peered down at him curiously. As soon as Kabikari Hucho whistled through the air, Naruto fell to the ground at the exact same time that Kakashi demanded everyone get down. Kakashi grabbed Sakura and Sasuke met the ground with his two hands. It's showtime, Naruto whispered to the ground as he peered up at the masked man that was suddenly standing on his blade. Such theatrics, Naruto thought as his eyes raced across the muscled man. Oh dear, Kakashi said rising up and staring aloofly at their attacker. You must be Momochi Zabuza, the S-class nin known as the Demon of the Mist. The usual pleasantries were passed. Sasuke's soft inevitable gasp when Kakashi's Sharingan eye was revealed and Zabuza's acknowledgement and then the interesting water fight broke out. Then Haku appeared on the treetop with his Senbon directed straight into Zabuza's neck. Now, Naruto may be an 18-year-old mind in the 12-year-old hanged body, but he was still Naruto and even though he had decided that he would not interfere with this, his instincts yanked at him sharply. Haku appeared by their sides and Naruto walked over to stand by his side. Haku-kun, he said causing everyone to look at Naruto and the masked boy to gasp and stare up at Naruto. You and Zabuza don't have to do this. The teen was too shocked at Naruto's knowledge to take notice when the blonde bent down and gently pried the mask from his beautiful face. You're nothing but slaves to Gadu for his money, he said in earnest. Don't do this to you and Zabuza, you'll only end up dead and it will be Gatu's fault. Naruto-kun? Kakashi's spinning Sharingan and normal eye were locked solely on him. It was taking every ounce of strength he had to remain standing, he was so exhausted. How do you know my name? Haku demanded as he stood. The two were the exact same height. Naruto shrugged. What does it matter? What matters is that I don't want to see you two die pointless deaths. I don't care if you're missing nins. I don't care how many people you guys have slaughtered. What I care about is you, Haku. Gadu will only dispose of you in the end. Believe me, I've been on the receiving end of power-hungry bastards enough to know. Haku's small shoulders sagged and he bowed his head dejectedly. You don't deserve to die because of him. Someone as great and infamous as Zabuza doesn't deserve to be buried because of Gatu. I don't know what to do, Haku said solemnly with his head bowed. Ah, oh, you know Haku-chan? He's a boy, Naruto corrected Kakashi. Is he? Kakashi asked. Haku blushed a little. Yes, I'm a boy, he confirmed. Take Zabuza and go, but remember my words, Haku, Naruto said handing him the mask. You will only be a victim of circumstance, both of you. You know how it ends, don't you? Haku asked swallowing. Naruto smiled. It's far too predictable. Kakashi wanted to protest but instead he slipped his hands into his pockets and watched as Haku bowed respectfully and knelt down to Zabuza, gathering him up onto his back. Protect your most precious person, Haku, Naruto said as he turned briefly. Thank you, er, Naruto. It was a good thing that Naruto was good at dodging verbal bullets. Sakura's flurry of demanding questions left her mouth as soon as Haku disappeared and Sasuke was observing him a lot more intently than he had ever done before. Tazuna was gazing at Naruto with the same amazement that he had back at the twin assassins in the forest and Kakashi was too knocked out from his overuse of the Sharingan. What the hell does it matter how I knew? Naruto finally had enough of Sakura's demanding shrieks. All that matters is that I did the right thing. Don't worry yourself with such trivial facts and let's worry about getting Kakashi somewhere that's not on my back. 
By the time Kakashi came back around, the dizzy sensation of having used too much of his Sharingan circled above his head. He could see multiple lights when there was only supposed to be one. He could hear Lo arguing in the background. How did you change so suddenly, Naruto? Sakura demanded. One day you're a freaky little idiot who doesn't know his left from his right and now here you are a completely different person as though that former Naruto never existed. How the hell would you know who the real Naruto is? Kakashi heard Naruto retort coldly. You're nothing but strangers to me Sakura-san, so don't even attempt to demand things of me. Naru, Naruto, have you always been like this? Sasuke asked. Why should I tell you? Naruto snapped. We're your teammates. Sakura protested. Oh, now I'm your teammate, Naruto sneered, what bullshit. Yo, Kaka-sensei, about time you came around to the land of the living. His tone had completely changed and as he sat up, Naruto moved to sit next to him with crossed legs. How are ya feeling? Better, Kakashi said surveying Naruto appraising ly. That was wonderful work, Naruto-kun, he said sincerely. I won't ask how you knew who that boy was. The important thing is we need to remain on guard in case Gatu remains unscathed and comes after us. You're in no shape though. That Sharingan had to have taken a lot out of you, Naruto said softly. You need to rest up. We're only genin, we can't do much without you. Kakashi's massive confusion over Naruto intensified along with his curiosity. He felt like a cat with it and tilted his head. That's true, what we'll do until then is train you three in the basic means of control. Yeah. Sasuke needs to obtain his Sharingan, Naruto said with a smirk. Sasuke flinched sharply at the remark and Kakashi nodded smiling slightly from behind his mask. He decided to hold off on his confused thoughts and learn everything about Naruto for himself. It was obvious that no one knew who Naruto was and a small part of Kakashi was feeling guilty about it. He knew that in the end a lot of Naruto's jaded mistrust stemmed from being an orphan and then the recent knowledge of the Kayubi concealed inside of him. Naruto could just see the wheels spinning in Kakashi's mind. It was rather amusing to see that he was, for once, not being an insensitive prick toward him. Naruto knew that when he was younger, he was out of control and easily put the experienced Junin off, but Kakashi, like Sasuke, had been one of the few that he strived to prove himself to. Kakashi never really did see the Kayubi in Naruto, it was what set him apart from most other shinobi his age. He knew what it was like to live under the shadow of the infamous. Chakra control up a tree. A small smile spread across Naruto's face as he gazed at it fondly. Perhaps he should put on an act, just this one time? Sasuke needed something to do and his Sharingan might be delayed because of Naruto's earlier actions. Along with Sasuke, he struggled while Sakura sat on the tree with her tongue sticking out childishly. Every time Sasuke got an inch Naruto would follow suit a few tries later. He kept it that way and he could see the competitive glint in Sasuke's eye. Naruto didn't even expend half of his chakra, from the years of practicing in sage mode the natural chakra gathering was second nature even with the demon's taint, but he pretended to be as exhausted as he was determined. He had to remember that this just wasn't about him learning and growing, but also Sasuke. Sasuke was more powerful than him in the future and Naruto didn't mind that, having the Sharingan and being from such an infamous clan he had to be, but right now he was still a Genin, Chunin level at best, but he was emotionally stunted, which put him off on being a Junin. But Naruto knew that Sasuke's heart was in the right place, even though he wouldn't admit it. He may not like Sakura, but he'd protected her back in the forest. He had to somehow keep Sasuke from leaving the village. But how? He wondered if Itachi would do something this time. He sure hoped so. That damn snake bastard wasn't getting his hands on Sasuke without a fight, and this time Naruto would prepare just for that reptile. Kakashi sat in the grass with his back against the tree. He was watching over his book as Sasuke and Naruto competed against each other. They had so much chakra in them, especially Naruto. He wished he could activate his Sharingan and assess the both of them, but he dare not use it. He needed to rest up in case it was ever needed again. He hadn't used it that much in a long time. Kakashi had been so surprised lately by Naruto that he was shocked that the little blonde was having such problems, but then again the Kayubi could be a massive interference. Between Naruto's chakra and the Kayubi's constant supply the control was impossibly overbalanced. By the time the third night fell on the land of waves, Naruto was lying flat on his back. 
Sasuke a few feet away from him. He didn't know if the Uchiha was asleep or not and Naruto would guess that he wouldn't fall asleep unless he knew for certain that Naruto was first. But Naruto couldn't sleep. He had so much on his mind and no one to talk to. He wondered what Itachi was doing right now. Was he with Akatsuki under the false control of pain when it was really Uchiha Madara pulling the strings? His thoughts kept him going for the rest of the night. It was on the fourth morning that Naruto ran into Haku like he had when they first officially met. Naruto. Haku brightened as he clutched the woven basket with herbs inside. Naruto, who had been sitting under the tree pretending to be exhausted, cracked an eye open. Haku kun. He sat up as the raven haired boy knelt down. He looked even more androgynous than before with his hair falling to his shoulders. He was wearing a pink kimono, and Naruto wondered if he dressed that way to put people off and make them believe that he was harmless. How are you, Zabuza san? Haku blushed and nodded. He's alright, the Senban has left him a little paralyzed. I was gathering some king's foil and peace bloom for a simple draft. Need help? He nodded and Naruto helped him gather the dark red plants. He swiped it at the roots with his kanai. Haku smiled. You're quite skilled as a shinobi aren't you? You could say that, Naruto said lightly. How did you know who I was? Haku finally asked him. Naruto decided on a half-truth. A friend of mine created a genjutsu. It's a really complicated process that even I don't quite understand. Let's just say that you and I aren't too far apart in lightness. Haku looked thoughtful. I'll accept that, Naruto-kun. What have you guys decided? Zabuza wants to meet you personally. He's very curious about you Naruto-kun, as am I. Well, where is he? I have time now, because everyone thinks I'm training. Haku's eyes lit up. Okay, we're not far from there. Naruto took the basket from Haku and followed the boy through the quiet forest. It's really nice around here, Haku confessed, if we weren't always on the run, I'd love to settle down in a quiet place like this. Ever thought about coming to Konoha? Naruto asked genially. Your village, he said knowingly staring at the forehead protector. Yeah, it's not so bad. I've always wanted to go to an academy. Zabuza San taught me everything I know which is probably a whole hell of a lot considering you can puncture a man so precisely without actually killing them. But a true shinobi is meant to kill. No, Naruto rebuked. A true shinobi is what you believe from your heart, Haku-chan. Do not let others tell you different. You don't have to be an emotionless robot to be a ninja. In the end a robot malfunctions, but the heart and soul can live on even after death. Haku hummed and the two fell into a comfortable silence. There was a clearing ahead. A familiar snowy bunny bounced out of the bushes toward Haku who beamed and scooped it up into his arms. Naruto watched feeling a little guilty considering he'd killed that bunny once before. I'd wondered where you had run off to, Haku said holding out a handful of clover. The bunny's nose twitched before he began to nibble from Haku's hand. There was a small aged cottage up ahead with black curtained windows. When they entered everything was basic at best. Zabuza-san? Haku called as he placed the rabbit down. They entered a small bedroom where a double bed and a stand were the only form of furniture. Zabuza was sitting up wrapped in bandages and reading a manga comic. His eyes paused on Haku before tracing over Naruto who tilted his head. Yo, Naruto raised his hand in a rather Kakashi-like fashion. Zabuza snorted, send you out for herbs and you come back with a pretty blonde. Pretty blonde? Naruto queried, did he have to use pretty? Haku blushed, that's not it, he's blonde is he not? Naruto snickered at Haku's discomfort and playfully slung an arm around shoulders that were as small as his 12 year old frame. Salright Haku-san, he teased and planted a kiss to his cheek. No need to blush, Naruto-san, he gasped as Zabuza laughed out loud. You know kid, I didn't think you were much, but you really are something. Naruto let go of Haku, thanks Zabuza-san. It's nice to actually meet you when your blade is not aimed at our necks. Zabaza's eyes narrowed and all traces of amusement left his demonic face. I wanna know what ya no kid. What makes ya so confident in your tale and how did ya no Haku? Haku winced at his tone of voice. Naruto remained unperturbed. It's rather complicated so I'll tell you what I told Haku. A friend of mine created an S-class genjutsu that allowed me to see more than I should. A rejection jutsu you could call it although it has no name because no one knows about it. Even I didn't know it until it happened. Zabuza turned thoughtful. I see, you're more than meets the eye, kid. 
course I am, I have to stay ahead of the game, if not someone like me winds up dead. Like you? Zabuza asked. Ain't ya just a normal brat? One that's cute enough for my Haku? Haku choked. Zabuza san. Naruto chuckled and glanced at Haku's dusty red cheeks. Haku is beautiful but a normal brat, I am not. You may be the devil of the mist, but I am the demon of Konoha, he said with a sideways smile. Zabuza put it together and his eyes went wide. Nine tails, the one and only. Nine tails? You mean as in the demon fox? Naruto nodded. That's right, I'm its vessel. I know of your past, Haku, he said stunning them once again. I know what your father did. It was a nasty and cruel thing. My father, who I'm not supposed to know about due to safety reasons, sealed the Kayubi inside of me, he said. Although it wasn't his fault, he couldn't take a random baby from someone, so he used his own son and for that I respect him. So maybe that's not a good reference. He rambled on before he realized what he was doing and paused in mid-sentence, whoops. Haku laughed quietly at him, his eyes twinkling as the blonde scratched the back of his head. Zabuza was not an unintelligent man. He did not survive for years to be called such. Your father was the Yandaimi of Konohagakure? Naruto smirked. Right in one, Zabuza-san. My town despises my very being and only because of the Hokage we have now do they not retaliate and try to harm me because of it. Yet you let Haku and I live, knowing the truth about me? Knowing the kind of things I have done? Zabuza sneered. I don't believe it, kid. They are none of my business. True, I don't condone them, he said softly, but I also know survival, Zabuza-san. I would never say something like, Hey Zabuza-san, you're a powerful man. Why don't you overthrow Gatu and take his entire empire? Haku bit down on his tongue to keep from laughing as Zabuza once again became shocked at their guest. I will take these herbs now, Haku said with a straight face. Zabuza-san needs the draft soon. You are a manipulative kid, Zabuza grunted what you said just now. Me? Naruto feigned confusion. What did I say? I'm only a 12-year-old brat. Yeah right, and I'm a girl. Are you really? Naruto asked innocently. Could I see proof? Zabuza chuckled darkly. I like you more and more, Uzumaki Naruto, or shall I call you Namikaze Naruto? Naruto's eyes glittered. I prefer Namikaze, although that will have to remain a secret for now, no one knows I know. Zabuza grinned predatorily. Not a problem, Namikaze. Naruto cheered inwardly. He gained two allies by being what Sasuke would call a dobi. He may have initially acted before thinking, but it gave him results. His gut instinct was hardly ever wrong. Team 7 had been absolutely floored when they met with Zabuza and Haku on the bridge. Tazuna started shaking when he saw the two, but Naruto beamed when Haku rushed to him for a hug. Haku-kun, Naruto said squeezing the boy's body. It was shocking to know that Haku was almost thinner than him and 15. Naruto had forgotten about how little Haku was and for once he didn't grouse about his own size issues. We've come to offer protection. Kakashi was shocked, but instead of knocking the offer away he gave a nod. Thank you, Zabuza-kun. Naruto cocked his head to the side and Haku leaned against him. These are your shinobi teammates? He asked a little shyly. Yeah. This is Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura and I believe you know Hitaki Kakashi. Guys this is Haku. Sasuke gave a nod while Sakura seemed rather confused, but she smiled kindly. How long have you been a team? For about a month and a half? Naruto tallied in his head. During the guarding of Tazuna, Naruto sat down between a lazy Kakashi, a perverted Zabuza and in front of him was a blushing Haku who was shaking his head. Haku looked over at Sasuke. Your name, I recognize it, he said thoughtfully. Sasuke inclined his head. Probably. You are missing Nins correct? Only he is, Haku said nodding towards Zabuza who kept tugging on Naruto's blonde tails and taunting his delicate features. Kakashi was just watching lazily from over his book but you could tell he was amused. You have the Sharingan, don't you? Sasuke inclined his head. It hasn't activated yet. I have a Keke Jenkade too, Haku said cheerfully. This got Sasuke's full attention. Oh, hold out your hands. Sasuke reluctantly did. Sakura was watching and Naruto could see a brief flicker of jealousy. It was obvious that Sasuke didn't talk to many people and for years she had been trying to get his attention. 
Haku placed his hands an inch above Sasuke's palms and concentrated his chakra until he manipulated the water element into ice in the palm of his hand. He dropped it into Sasuke's who stared wide-eyed. I see, he paused, ice release? There's a legend saying that the ice release was founded in the land of water and they all were slaughtered. Haku blushed and ducked his head. Yes, in the land of water they viewed Keke Jenke as demonized and destroyed anyone who possessed the ability. Sasuke Kun is from the infamous Uchiha clan. He's the heir. Sakura cooed breathlessly. Haku blinked at her and Sasuke rolled his eyes and attempted to ignore her. Except you? Sasuke asked Haku. Sakura tried to once again to add to the conversation only to be brushed away by Sasuke. Naruto felt slightly bad for her but she had no tact. Sasuke was interested in Haku and Sakura should at least try and play nice if she wanted to win Sasuke's attention. But then again, Naruto was 18 and Sakura was 12. It wasn't hard to forget just how far away in age he was from his friends and how close he was in age to Kakashi and Zabuza. Haku only smiled but both Naruto and Sasuke witnessed the flicker of pain. Well, it's great but not as great as the Sharingan, Sakura declared haughtily. Sasuke's eyes narrowed as Haku's blush came back. Actually, Sakura-san, he addressed coldly getting the Pinket's attention, Haku-kun's ability is ten times more rare than my own. There are still Sharingan wielders and when it's overused by certain moves they eventually go blind. There is no drawback to ice release. She gaped at him, obviously not understanding why Sasuke was defending someone he didn't even know. It has caused some trouble but in the long run, I got lucky, Haku confessed sweetly. However an hour later, Naruto had a nagging suspicion that he should really get back to Tazuna's house. He hadn't asked if Gatu was still alive. Also, if they attacked Sasuke could gain his Sharingan. He nodded inwardly at this. Sasuke, Naruto said standing abruptly. Sasuke looked up. Come with me, he said. Without waiting for the Uchiha to follow he headed off. Sasuke frowned. Should I go? He looked at Kakashi who was watching Naruto's retreating back. Yeah, his intuition has been rather accurate so far. Naruto is kind of amazing isn't he? Haku said smiling. Go in to be a ass boy when he ages, Zabuza said following Haku's smile with a smirk. Sakura choked. Naruto? She asked horrified. Kakashi didn't say aloud but he wholeheartedly agreed with Zabuza, especially with the way he was going now. But perving on a student was inappropriate, especially when that student was 12. Sasuke had a faint tint on his cheeks as he left the group of guards to catch up to Naruto. Naruto. Naruto smiled. Sasuke, where are we going? I know you were enjoying Haku's company but... Shut it. Sasuke scowled. I was curious. And Uchiha getting curious? Naruto teased and nudged him. Ah, oh, don't worry Sasuke-kun, Haku needs a friend like you. His family ended much the same way as yours. Sasuke swallowed thickly and Naruto could easy read the thoughts and it was true. Haku was way too sweet to have had that sort of past. What are we doing here? The Uchiha growled having not received the answer the first time he asked. Naruto taking pity on Sasuke looped his wrist through his forearm. Well, Gatu isn't dead and Tazuna is still building the bridge. What would a man like Gatu do if he knew all about Tazuna's little grandson and fragile daughter? Sasuke's eyes actually widened. He hadn't thought of that. In fact there were a lot of things Sasuke hadn't really thought of. It may not be our mission to protect them but it is our mission to protect Tazuna, at all costs even emotionally. Stop talking and let's go, Dobi. Naruto smirked. Bastard, he said with near affection. Just as Naruto predicted a pair of assassin ninjas showed up and they each took on one with a near flawless taijutsu. Naruto knew Sasuke's favorite moves, even after so many years he never changed. It always began with a kick from his left foot and he always pinpointed the enemy's ankles or behind the calves. When the ninja managed to land a sharp punch to Sasuke's rib cage, damaging him, his bloodline limit was activated. Inari and Tsunami were huddled together, holding onto each other. Inari had his face buried in Tsunami's shoulder trying to hide his fear but failing miserably. Naruto and Sasuke drove the ninjas back causing them to take flight soon after for their own lives sake, especially against Sasuke's Sharingan. They obviously hadn't been trained for something like that. Naruto held Sasuke back from killing his. Why did you do that? He demanded pinwheel eyes glaring blood red at him. 
The adrenaline surged and Naruto knew that he was just dying to try out more of his Sharingan. But that could wait. He yanked Sasuke close so that Inari and Tsunami couldn't hear. Inari has seen enough murder, he hissed into the Uchiha's ear. Look at him, Sasuke, Naruto demanded. Sasuke flashed a sharp look over his shoulder at the little boy in green bibs. Damn, he was small, was Sasuke's thought. Inari had been younger than he was when Sasuke witnessed his clan's murder. Fine. Naruto smiled gently, seeing the brief flicker of sad understanding. He brushed his finger down the side of Sasuke's cheek, causing the Sharingan to dissolve, leaving his eyes the usual black. Good job on the Sharingan, Sasuke Ni, he teased. Sasuke didn't say anything, but he didn't glare at the nickname. When they arrived at the bridge they were just in time to see Zabuza and Kakashi teaming together to send a bloodied, short, frizzy-haired man with glasses flying off the partially finished bridge with a massive splash. There were mobs of people that Haku was fending off with his demon ice mirrors. But the mirrors were used as not only a prison to trap, but also as a guard of walls in which Sakura and Tazuna were put inside of. There were so many illusions that Naruto couldn't even pick out the real one. Wow! Sasuke breathed staring at the mirrors. Naruto chuckled. Someone like? Sasuke scowled. Shut up. Damn that demon. Killing our meal ticket, you little bitch. Sasuke's head snapped to the side when he heard that and before Haku could retaliate, Sasuke had jumped into the air and shifted until the side of his foot collided with the man's mouth. Haku smiled sheepishly. Thank you Sasuke-kun. Your eyes, he declared with a chirp. Sasuke smirked and Naruto cheered causing Sasuke to look back and nod sharply to his blonde brother. Have fun copying, Naruto teased. I will, Sasuke said with that same ghostly smirk. I want his clones and yours. Naruto chuckled. Is that so? Cage bunch and no jutsu. He went through the seals swiftly and about a hundred or more of his clones appeared to help with the ongoing fight of freeloaders. There you are, Sasuke ni. Haku o tuto? Haku giggled. My water spears aren't a part of my bloodline limit, he said just as a half a dozen of them rained down piercing several of their attackers at the same time. Naruto stifled a yawn and fell back onto the bed. He'd been home for almost a week. The completion of the bridge hadn't taken too long, especially when Zabuza actually chipped in. In return Tsunami cooked for them as payment. It was also nice to know that Sasuke had actually made a friend and Naruto almost felt sorry for Sakura. Almost, the girl still had some learning to do. She wouldn't grow up until Ba-chan got a hold of her. He really couldn't wait for that. Sakura really needed a mental balance check. She had a ton of potential but she was still really immature much more than Naruto had ever been. It was only because she was a girl she could get away with it. The great Naruto bridge still made Naruto laugh to this day. There were still things that hadn't changed. One of the best things that had was the free pass that the Hokage had assigned to Zabuza and Haku to allow them into their village so long as Zabuza swore to never raise his blade to a Konoha shinobi. As soon as he had returned, Baruka had been on him like bees on honey. He'd heard about the dangerous a rank mission and had nearly gone into cardiac arrest because of it. Naruto smiled fondly as he thought about his Chunin sensei. He was one of the best people in the world. Naruto was lying in bed at noon, still in silk pajama pants and no shirt. He was giving himself a lazy day. The sun was going wild in his bedroom causing all the dust particles to show up in the air. Naruto had one leg bent with the other stretched out in front of him and his bracelet was off and lying on the spare pillow so that he could think and enjoy the sensation of his real form. Being short did a number on Naruto's ankles, even if it was just a henge. At 12 he was barely 5 foot and when he had returned with Jiraiya he had managed to gain 2 or 3 inches. Hell, Sasuke was already near 5 4 and by the time he turned 15 he was what Naruto's matured height was and at 18 he topped out at 5 foot 10. The Chunin exam would be coming up soon. It was nearly January according to his replacement calendar, which didn't have the 12 best tasting ramen as the base picture for the month. Although, ramen did sound good putting on the bracelet didn't. Finally, after much debate, he dressed and then slipped the bracelet on and activated the henge. He was wearing light khaki shorts that had loose fitting pockets on each side of his thigh and leg. The shirt was long sleeved and white with a dark blue fish net to go over the top of it. 
He adjusted his forehead protector and smiled at the mature 12-year-old before rushing out of the house with his Gama Chan wallet. The old man and his daughter greeted them cheerfully. Ayame gasped when she saw that he didn't look like the same Naruto she knew so well. What did you do, Naruto-kun? Ayame asked her brown eyes wide. Naruto smiled. Absolutely nothing Ayame, I've always been like this. No, you change. Not really, Naruto rebuked softly. It just seems like it. Miso ramen with pork slices? The old man asked. Seeing his daughter was too stunned to react. Yes, old man, Naruto said swinging his legs on the stool. Ayame, darling, please stop gawking at our favorite customer. The old man teased his daughter who blushed furiously. My apologies. When she scurried away to prepare his food, he was interrupted once again from his musings by a startled gasp and a shadow that consumed him. Naruto looked up and chuckled when he saw the gawking lazy genius, Nara Shikamaru. Naruto-kun? Shikamaru pulled his hands from his pockets and pressed them to the table and leaned in. Is that you? Naruto couldn't help it, he let out a small chuckle. It was hilarious to shock the genius. Naruto tugged the brunette by his unbuttoned shirt and made him sit with a lazy plop. Hello to you too, Shika-chan, he taunted and got a lazy eye roll in return. He loved using nicknames, seeing how far he could get with them. HN, troublesome, I can't stand my curiosity, he groused as he propped his elbow up onto the bar and placed his chin into the palm of his hand. Oh and for your future benefit Shika-chan, it is me, Uzumaki Naruto. What are you up to? Where are your teammates? Choji is with his dad and Ino is taking over the flower shop for her mom. I got hungry and this was closest to where I was sleeping. His voice was devoid of any excitement and his eyes were a little droopy, causing Naruto to snicker. Even when he was 18, Shikamaru never changed. He wondered how the timeline would play out this time around. Things were already happening differently because of the smallest advances in Naruto's change of personality and involvement. Stop thinking so much. You'll hurt your laziness. Naruto swatted the dark-haired boy, getting a grunt. Possibly. Can I help you, young man? Ayame asked her eyes sheepishly going over to Naruto. E.H., whatever he's having, I'll take the same. Shikamaru turned back to Naruto when she took off. You look good. Naruto blushed. Thank you, he said sheepishly. It was the first true compliment by someone who had yet to be his friend. Uruka didn't count and the others only reacted in shock to his change. But Shikamaru's words made him feel good. I suppose it became troublesome to keep hiding, E.H.? Sometimes it is. I heard from my sensei that you guys went on an A-rank mission and did well. Yeah and it was fun. Sounds like too much work, he mumbled when their food was placed in front of them. Naruto snickered. Lifting a pencil is a lot of work for you. How do you lift chopsticks? Shikamaru hummed a minute. Hmm, I was hungry six hours ago and if I don't eat I'm going to get a headache and that's even more troublesome. Naruto's nose twitched as he dug into his ramen with a lot more excitement than Shikamaru. Shikamaru was watching him lazily from his own bowl. Hey Shika-chan, why did you become a ninja? He asked out of nowhere. Naruto couldn't help it, he'd always wondered and never asked. Hmm, Shika slowly chewed his noodles. I thought I'd finally get excited about something, but it's only proved to be annoying. The only upside is Asuma Sensei. He's alright, even if he does smoke. But you're one of the most capable ninja. Shikamaru blushed. Nah, Naruto-kun, just like you I was a dead last. But are those our true colors, Shika-chan? Shikamaru paused and searched Naruto's face. True colors, he repeated and reached out taking Naruto's chin, shocking the Jinchuriki. I don't have pretty colors like you, Naruto-kun. He said earnestly and for once his voice had gone up a couple notches. Naruto fought down his blush. There was that pretty word again. Nara Shikamaru, Naruto said seriously, I think you underestimate yourself. Hmm, if I overestimate then it means I'll have more work to do. He dropped his hand from Naruto's chin and went back to his ramen, but his gaze never left the smaller boy's face. Naruto chuckled. Can I overestimate you? Shikamaru smiled slightly. Sure. Naruto grinned. Last time it had taken a life and death situation for him to talk to Shikamaru on a level that didn't have Naruto on the receiving end of being teased and patronized by Kiba or scorned at by Ino. Why did you wear orange? Shikamaru asked after the two had left the ramen bar together. They were walking down the street. 
Naruto had his hands shoved in his pockets. Naruto smiled. Why do you think, Shika-chan? I really don't know. He didn't trust enough to tell Shikamaru the truth just yet, and instead he looked straight ahead. You may have been sleeping too much to notice, but everyone in the village scorned or ignored me. I could never get ahead. Every time I tried someone was there to sabotage it. Shikamaru's lazy expression shifted into a frown. So, I decided instead of trying why don't I just annoy everyone. So I donned the orange and started pranking the shit out of everyone. It wasn't the whole truth, but it was enough for now. You became loud and obnoxious. Imhum and sometimes I get too used to that personality and stay in it. If I allowed myself, I'd grow up too quickly and I wouldn't be the same person. That might be troublesome. Everything is troublesome for you, Shika-chan, Naruto teased and bumped the boy's arm with his shoulder. Shikamaru peered down at Naruto. Not everything. Naruto being, he was warm with happiness. He would have to thank Itachi when he saw him and maybe even surprise the Uchiha with a hug. Naruto wanted to pull everyone close to him that he knew and he didn't want to let them go. He would find all his family and keep them close. Sasuke included. The days were coming and going fast. They were given c rank missions every single time they went to the Hokage considering their remarkable success with the a rank. When Naruto returned a week before the Chunin exam, he was exhausted. He discarded the bracelet and stripped out of his clothes down to his boxers. He was so tired, protecting the daimyo's daughter was a bitch and so was she. When he awoke the next morning, he knew instantly that he wasn't alone. How did he know? He could smell food cooking in his kitchen. He smiled slightly as he pushed the covers down and padded out of the room. He paused in the doorway and rubbed his eyes. Morning Itachi-san. Naruto felt himself blush when he realized he was only wearing boxers. His memory had come back when Itachi's gaze glided elegantly up and down his frame. Naruto-kun. I think I should get dressed, Naruto muttered sheepishly. HN. There was a non-committable tone to his famous Uchiha remark. When Naruto came back he was in jeans that had massive destruction on the front and back thighs. The top was dark blue and sleeveless while the fishnet was a light blue and long-sleeved. You got me some very interesting clothes, Itachi-san. Naruto said sliding his arms across the counter and watching what he was doing. I would have thought you were the kind of guy who went for the dressy things. Looks are deceiving, Itachi replied. Too true, Naruto said and then he gasped and rushed around. I forgot. I said I'd give you a hug the next time I saw you. Itachi paused when Naruto quite easily slipped his slender body into his arms and fit perfectly. Naruto snickered and squeezed. Thank you. Itachi had no idea why Naruto was thanking him, but he gently touched the younger man on the top of his hair and stroked gently. Why? Naruto blushed and pulled back to stare at Itachi better. I know it's not what you intended, but being able to start over. You are wrong, Itachi said cupping Naruto's tan cheek. It is as I intended it to be, Naruto-kun. You don't have to use honorifics with me, Itachi. Naruto. Naruto smiled and brought his shoulders up. So, what are you making? Itachi turned back to the stove. An omelette. Ooh, sounds good, he said standing next to Itachi. Need me to do anything? Itachi seemed to consider Naruto's words while lowering the heat on the stove. Talk to me, he said finally. Happily, Naruto did. For two straight hours he told Itachi about all of his missions from the most boring to the A rank and meeting Zabuza and Haku all over again. Itachi didn't say a word and merely stared at Naruto intently. Sometimes, Naruto got too excited and he blushed before sinking back into his chair only to say something else and the excitement returned in full. The Chunin exam is soon. What have you been doing, Itachi? He asked. Itachi placed his drink down and observed Naruto your capture. The plans are still laid. Naruto winced. Yeah, about that. What are we doing about Sasuke now? Itachi didn't answer but his face was devoid of any hint to what he was thinking. Itachi, Naruto said quietly. I don't know if I'm going to be enough to stop Orochimaru's seal from happening without revealing all of my power and my age. You know as well as I do that the truth would be much more preferable than the lies. He needs to know. Itachi rose from his seat and took their plates to the kitchen. Naruto sighed, he knew that this was hard for Itachi. The topic of Sasuke was a sensitive one. You know, I call him Sasuke Ni now. Itachi placed the dishes in the sink and turned on the hot water. He looked over at Naruto. What do you want, Naruto? 
he asked quietly. I want you both to be happy, Naruto answered. Neither of you deserve this punishment. He won't listen, Itachi assured. He'll listen to me, Naruto insisted. If I have to, I'll tell him everything, even if I have to pin his ass to the ground and sit on him. Itachi's eyes flashed, which Naruto deciphered as amusement. I don't want to be happy if you and Sasuke remain the same. It's not fair. We'll see. Also, I've been thinking and we have another person to save. Itachi waited without responding. Gara of the sand. That Shukaku tears him up so badly. In the future I studied the seal that old lady from Suna put on him and Kami-sama. Naruto growled cheeks flushing. That woman's inability to seal was disgusting. It was so bad that it pisses me off and I don't want Gara to go through that torture. What do you have in mind? Itachi asked. The Sharingan and my ability with seals. With the Sharingan I should be able to cut off most of Shukaku's possessive qualities and the pain that he goes through for not sleeping. His mind is twisted and jumbled because of the lack of rest. His body is exhausted and so is his mind. What will you do to get him here? Naruto snickered. Why, I'll take the old-fashioned route and kidnap him and then turn him into my panda-chan. There was a rare glitter in Itachi's eyes and for a second he didn't speak and then, you're the most optimistic person I have ever met. Thank you, Naruto. Kidnapping had never been an ability Naruto excelled in and so it was no surprise that as he crept through the town at half past two in the morning, ten hours before Naruto officially met the Suna siblings, that he would be caught by his perverted, aloof sensei who had conveniently been prowling the streets so late. Naruto scowled visibly when Kakashi dropped down next to him, orange pornographic material in one hand while the other deftly landed on his shoulder abruptly stopping the blonde in his tracks. My, my Naruto-kun, I didn't take you for a creepy night owl, Kakashi said in his usual easygoing voice, but Naruto knew that by the slightly strong hold on his 12-year-old shoulder and the one gray eye on him that Kakashi was being firm. I could ask you the same thing, but I doubt I get an answer, Naruto teased hoping he'd be left alone. Hokage-sama has asked me to patrol the streets while the ninja from other lands come in and out. Asuma and Kuranai are doing the same. Damn. He'd gotten an answer and now it was his turn. I couldn't sleep, Naruto lied. So, I decided to go walking to clear my head. Hmm, a walk does clear a lot of things up, I agree. But you know the curfew rules for Gen and Shinobi, Naruto-kun. Naruto rolled his eyes. I'm aware, but does it look like I care? You're lucky it was me who found you, since I'm your sensei and a junin I suppose I could walk with you until you wish to return home. Naruto ground his teeth but said nothing in reply. He couldn't because Kakashi was right. Genin curfew was a strict thing amongst the village. You could be 20-something years old and a genin and the rule still applied. Damn it, Itachi was waiting back at the apartment for him to get Gara, and he'd promised he wouldn't be longer than an hour. Not that the Uchiha commented on the time frame, patient that man was, way too patient. Naruto dropped his crossed arms and swung them at his sides. Kakashi's hand was still on his shoulder, but his eye had gone back to his book. They stayed in sync with each other as they were met with a lake of sparkling water reflected from the moonlight. Together they crossed the stone bridge, but Naruto stopped. Kakashi didn't miss a beat. The fake 12 year old moved over to the ledge and hoisted himself onto it. Kakashi followed suit and they sat side by side where they both could get a good view of the full moon spinning in all her glory. Naruto was about a block away from the inn that he knew the Suna siblings to be residing in. All of the most important people from other lands would be there. It was the most fancy hotel with a hot springs built in underground. Why are we here, Naruto-kun? Naruto shrugged. I let my feet carry me, he lied easily. The wind blew over them and Kakashi's attention was nowhere near his Icha Icha paradise, which he'd read over a hundred times and counting. It was on Naruto and he noticed how the wind ruffled Naruto's blonde hair causing it to sway elegantly. His nose was in the air and he had the gentlest light cast across him from the moon's glow. In those few seconds, 12-year-old Naruto did not exist. His eyes were amazing and they sparkled like the water beneath their dangling feet. When did Naruto become so beautiful? Kakashi wondered. How had he been capable of hiding this person behind the faux Naruto that he'd met on that first day? Sure, it had been brief, but the boy's appearance and hyperactive nature was something no one could forget. It was like someone else had transferred into Naruto's 12-year-old body. But that was impossible of course. This was the same Naruto. 
there were hints all around if one looked hard enough. He was happy, cheerful, and optimistic, so much so that it drove Sakura up the wall. He was always ready with a smile and tried hard to make a new friend. That was the Naruto that everyone knew and those same people ignored for so long. It was true. A village of ignorant idiots could do much to a child's personality. Stunt it, ruin it, and completely destroy it without ever realizing that Naruto had been but a baby. Now though, Kakashi saw it all. While Naruto was sweet and gentle and ready for anything, he was also haunted. His lovely round eyes, which Kakashi remembered to be a little squinted, held a shade behind them as though he had witnessed many terrible things in death. Kakashi would know this shade because he possessed it, but what could a 12-year-old have possibly seen to cause this? He knew it wasn't abuse, the Hokage would have thrown away his own moralistic issues if he ever thought Naruto was being abused. He'd have all the old biddies sitting on the council dead by means of silent assassination. It wasn't like the Sandame, Sarutobi Hirazen was not a violent man, but he loved Naruto. His eyes became hard like steel whenever anyone spoke ill of his grandson in all but blood. Danzo had been forbidden to go anywhere near Naruto after the old man brought up a suggestion that Naruto should be locked up or treated as a weapon rather than a child. There was a sealed scroll that kept the cruel man away from Naruto at all times. Kakashi could almost guarantee that Naruto meant more to him than his own real grandson for the reason that Konohamaru had a family and Naruto did not. What's with that look? Kaka-sensei. Naruto asked jostling the man out of his deep thoughts. I was thinking of your growth, Kakashi said honestly. Naruto quirked his lip. Really? What about it? I'm curious about it, but I won't push you to answer. Good because you won't get one, Naruto said cheekily. Kakashi chuckled. I didn't think for a moment I would. He knew that, because Kakashi wouldn't have answered either. Naruto hummed and turned back to the sky. How did he tell Kakashi to scram? He gazed thoughtfully over at the inn. He knew Gara wouldn't be asleep considering Shukaku didn't allow it. He growled mentally. It really irked him that such an inexperienced person, however old she was, destroyed a kid for their own means. At least Minato had taken extra care with his seal, making it so that Naruto didn't have a horrible life of sleeplessness or allow Kayubi to rule over him. The fucking mutt would love that, Naruto was sure. It was a half hour later when Naruto decided he'd done enough, thinking, and slipped off the bridge. Where to now, Naruto-kun? Kakashi asked placing his book into his pouch and shoving his hands into his pockets. Home, I did enough thinking and got nowhere. Kakashi smiled behind his mask. Perhaps thinking isn't your territory, he teased. I'm beginning to think so too, Naruto retorted lightly. I should leave that to you and Sasuke, the aloof ones of the bunch. Chuckling softly, Kakashi shrugged his shoulders. Uchiha Sasuke is quiet because of his past. The Uchiha I knew was not very quiet at all. Naruto arched an eyebrow. He knew all about Obito. Kakashi had told him when Naruto and he had been trapped in a prison cell together by Danzo and his root members. It was about three hours before his death and Sai snuck in to get them. It was then Kakashi told him how he got the eye. But this Naruto wasn't supposed to know that. Oh? Naruto asked. I can't imagine an Uchiha ever being loud. Kakashi's good eye looked away from Naruto. Uchiha Obito, he was my teammate. I was a Junin and he was still a Genin and he taught me the most valuable lesson that no shinobi hire could ever teach me. What's that Kaka-sensei? Loyalty to your teammates. It's why I failed every single one of my potential groups until you three, or should I say until you. Kakashi brought his gaze back to Naruto who was now blushing. If it hadn't been for you, your team would have been sent back to the academy. And to think, I was going to fail you because of you in the first place. How wrong was I? He thought the last bit to himself. Another genin teaching him something invaluable. Covers weren't meant to be judged. Hitachi said nothing to Naruto's massive rant when he got back. The Uchiha simply stared at him when he stormed back outside determined to get Gara before the sun rose. This time, Naruto didn't take roads and instead he hopped from building to building clinging to the shadows and never stepping even a toe into the places where the moonlight could reveal him. When he reached the area where the inn sat, on the other side of the bridge Naruto and Kakashi had occupied a half hour ago, Naruto's eyes narrowed. Gara would either be outside on the roof staring at the moon or in his room staring out the window. 
Well, it was now or never, Naruto thought leaping from the building and landing like a cat in the center of the bridge. It was the first time he allowed light to hit him since he had ditched Kakashi. Quickly, he darted to the other side breathing gently as he was once again covered by the cloak of shadows. He really hoped Kakashi had gone home. It was almost 4 o'clock in the morning and Naruto really wanted to sleep more than an hour, but he had a feeling that he wasn't going to get it tonight. He scaled the building to the roof and paused when he saw the sight of the redhead sitting on the rail. He'd been looking up at the moon until he felt Naruto's presence and his shoulders stiffened suddenly. Now that Naruto was here he shoved his hands into his pockets, trying to act as harmless as possible. Sabaku no Gara? Naruto asked softly causing the black ring-eyed boy to glare over his shoulder. The glare modeled Haku's ice mirrors, such light green eyes so intense and haunting with a dead-like quality. Naruto wanted to cry just seeing them. I know you don't care who I am, but I'm Namikaze Naruto, he said deciding to give Gara his real name for good measure. A flicker of surprise flashed into his eyes but he still didn't speak. Well, no one knows I know my last name is Namikaze, they think it's Uzumaki, but what they don't know won't hurt them, right? Still no response from the boy. Look, I know you don't know me or care and I'm betting you're feeling a little bloodthirsty right now, aren't you? Another flash of surprise. Good, Naruto was getting somewhere. Yeah, Shukaku, the one-tailed raccoon demon. How do you know? Gara hissed darkly as he stood up. He was taller than Naruto by a couple of inches. He crossed his arms over his chest. A Jinchuriki knows another Jinchuriki, doesn't he? Gara gasped and he swallowed while suddenly clutching his chest. His eyes crossed and he shook a little more violently. Ah, oh, Shukaku is mad, isn't he? Naruto asked. Gara nodded pathetically. Probably senses danger from me, huh? Naruto smiled gently. Gara, you have nothing to fear from me, but Shukaku does, he said quietly. What do you mean? Gara asked slowly as he reined in his painful thoughts and feelings. I'm the host of the Nine Tales, the Kayubi no Kitsune. Shukaku is the only friend I have, Gara said coldly. It's my mother, what do you want with it? He demanded features changing from misery to hissing anger. Gara, Shukaku is not your friend. He's trying to consume you and eat your body alive. You haven't slept since you were an infant because of the poorly made seal on your body. Your real mother had to sacrifice her life and it's not your fault. It was your father and that old lady who did the sealing's fault. Lies, lies. Gara growled, you'll pay for lies. His voice had changed and Naruto could tell that he was possessed and the Suna boy had no control whatsoever. It happened very quickly, the cork on his container of sand popped open and the sand pooled out of it with a one-handed seal. Naruto jumped into the air and twisted his body, dodging and parrying each attempt as it tried to grab him. He created a small ball of Rasengan while dodging and shoved it into the attacking sand. The stuff went crazy and spilled all over as the Rasengan shredded it separating each grain. Gara, stop this right now, Naruto ordered. I'm taking you with me and I'm sealing that damn thing. Fight it, Gara. If you fight this, I can swear on my own life that I will never leave you alone. As Naruto got closer, the fight suddenly stopped and the sand hung in midair. Please Gara, I was just like you, shunned and hated for what I was. I lived alone in a one-bedroom apartment. The expression of pain was visible and the helpless child fell to his knees and he held his head in his hands. Stop, please, stop. It hurts, it burns. Naruto unsure if he should make the move of getting into the sand did anyway and he knelt down by Gara and hesitantly reached out to touch the top of his head. Gara flinched violently and shot back as though he'd been electrocuted. Let me seal it, you will still have access to its chakra, but I'll get rid of the damage it's doing to your body. You won't be able to handle any more than five years of Shukaku before he consumes you entirely. Let me seal him. Gara moaned and shuddered violently. Aye aye. It yells at me, tells me to feel, to consume, to let others bleed for me. It's a lying asshole, Naruto growled. I've been so out of control before that I hit eight tails, Gara, and it's horrible. Please Gara, you can let me take you willingly or I can do it by force, because either way, I will seal that thing inside of you. I care about you. How? Gara whined. I don't know you. No, but I know you, Naruto said simply. I don't know how long I can control it on my own, mother is angry. Then I'll bind you, but only temporarily. I give you my word, Gara that I only want to help you. 
Please let me, hold me down, Gara whispered quietly. If Shukaku feels threatened he'll take over, he always does. Naruto was about to throw on a seal when thick, impenetrable ropes appeared, circling around Gara. The boy began to shake violently and his eyes rolled. I'll kill you. His mouth moved on its own accord and when Naruto looked up he saw Itachi standing a few feet behind Gara. Good work, Naruto, Itachi said softly. Naruto frowned at the poor Gara as Itachi activated a genjutsu to distract them. You may carry him now. Naruto didn't waste any time. He took the heaving Gara in his arms. Gently, he petted the boy's cheek wondering what Itachi was making him see. I'm using Tsukiyomi, it's the most powerful. Naruto frowned again. I won't hurt him, Itachi promised. They used Shunshin to get back quickly. Naruto placed him on the sofa before taking it to Tommy Mat and dragging it into the room. He then grabbed some of his old orange covers. This would be a very messy job and exhausting, he thought with a sigh. Itachi was still watching over Gara. What did you do about going blind? Naruto asked when he came back into the room. Itachi didn't answer for a moment and then he looked at Naruto. I arrived at the scene of my parents' murders and I took my father's eyes at his dying request. Naruto was a little confused. Did he request that last time? Itachi nodded stiffly. I refused the first time. Naruto pulled out the brushes and ink that the two had filled up with their own blood. Some of the Kayubi's chakra would be used as a sacrifice. Naruto would never know it was missing. Itachi unsealed the ropes from Gara's thin body and Naruto began to strip him until he was fully naked and placed an orange cover over him in respect. Naruto started at Gara's chest painting an infinite number of runes and symbols from shoulder to shoulder down to his navel. Itachi fired up a handful of chakra for the five elements unseal Fuenjutsu. There was only one difference between Itachi's use and Jiraiya's, Itachi combined it with his Sharingan making his fingertips flare red. The seal had been placed over Gara's heart. It was the sole reason why Gara was in so much damn pain. An identifiable set of seals glowed and Naruto immediately traced them using one-handed seals backwards to reverse its effects. The entire room began to turn into a sand-like haze as Chakra started to pull out of Gara's skin, mainly from his chest. Naruto and Itachi ignored the shocking pressure. Sit him up for me, Naruto said calmly. Naruto shifted and ducked his small body underneath Itachi's outstretched arms that held Gara up by his shoulders. He settled in Indian style with his back to the man's chest and began the ceiling, scrawling on Gara's skin. The chakra tried to force Naruto and Itachi to stop by taking the form of a black-eyed raccoon, but as long as Itachi's Sharingan remained active they had nothing to fear. Bear, wind, tiger, left, back, one hand was signing the seals and the other was painting as he went along. Naruto released some of his own chakra, making his eyes turn into the Kayubi's blood-red ones with black slits. Careful Naruto, Itachi whispered. Naruto ignored him, not because he was annoyed, but because breaking the hand seals even for a second could cause destruction to Gara's fragile body. Finally, seal flaring, chakra burst out of Naruto's fingers, red like Itachi's, but for an entirely different reason. Naruto let go of the brush, not caring that it splattered all over him and as soon as his flaming fingers touched Gara's left shoulder blade, the hand that dropped the brush took the seals over in perfect formation. Shukaku's corrupted chakra began to scream and dissolve right before their eyes. It was sucked straight into the black five-pointed star seal that shined on Gara's pale skin. Naruto breathed and sagged back against Itachi, his eyes dropping closed as he did. Damn, Naruto had forgotten how powerful Fuenjutsu actually was. He'd done it twice to seal away the nasty curse that Danzo had put on Tsunade before he died. He scowled inwardly as he thought about that man. He needed to be assassinated, and then perhaps Sasuke could take that stolen eye for himself. Sleep Naruto, I will handle you both from here, O oh Tuto. Himke Aniki, put him in bed with me. Naruto awoke to the sun shining through the bedroom. He chuckled when he realized that something thin and snoring was attached to the side of his body. He cracked an eye open and saw Gara fast asleep. Naruto smiled softly. He checked his gamma stop clock to see that it was well after noon. He frowned, hoping that Gara's siblings didn't go acting like asses toward Konohamaru. If they did, he really hoped that Sasuke would be there to stop it. He placed the clock back down and rubbed the sleep from his eyes. 
It was the day before the beginning of the Chunin exam and he hoped Gara would be awake by then. Most people would probably wonder what the hell Naruto was thinking about putting a stranger in his bed, but Naruto didn't want Gara to awake alone. He promised the redhead that he wouldn't be alone ever again. Itachi came into the room briefly and Naruto gazed over at him. Did you sleep? Naruto asked softly. I did, Itachi replied. My body is exhausted, as expected. Naruto nodded and looked at Gara, who was still latched onto him like a child. He's a secret cuddle bug. A brief flicker of amusement crossed his face. Perhaps I should buy him a teddy bear, he teased with a smile. Itachi inclined his head. When Gara finally awoke it was well after 3 o'clock. Naruto knew he was an hour late to meet up with his team, but he didn't really give a damn. Kakashi was always two hours late anyway. Green eyes were confused and he jerked his arm away from Naruto and breathed deeply. He's gone? No, Naruto answered. He sat up in bed with his back against the headboard. I removed the seal from your chest and recreated the seal and moved it to your shoulder. I imbibed some of my chakra along with the Sharingan to keep it from possessing you. There are runes all over your body that I used to seal Shukaku. He won't resurface and, if by some chance he does, there are a couple of Uchiha who could use the Sharingan to stop it. Gara looked torn between relief and fear. He turned away from Naruto. I slept. Imhum, how did it feel? Good, why? Gara then asked. Why did you help me? You don't know me. Do I have to? Naruto asked tilting his head. I've killed many people. I don't really care about that, Naruto said firmly. I wanted to kill them. I know you did. Not all of it was Shukaku. I'm aware, Naruto said, as I said on the roof, I'm also a vessel of a tailed demon. I know what it's like Gara, and it's only luck that I had a person who actually cared about me in my childhood, not counting the Hokage. It isn't hard to want to destroy all those that make your life miserable that do nothing but hurt you over and over again. I was weak. No, Naruto rebuked. Your seal was fucked up and where it was located only doubled the destructive nature of that seal. It pretty much ate your emotions every time you started to feel them and Shukaku fed you its emotions of hate and violence. Kayubi has tried countless times to get me to release my seal. Did you? Almost, Naruto said softly, it got to eight tails once. Gara bowed his head. You are the fourth Hokage's child. Yes, but no one knows that. Except me. I won't tell. I know you won't. Gara looked pained. Thank you. Naruto chuckled and slung his arm around Gara who flinched but didn't draw away. Don't worry Panda-chan, I have a very clingy habit. He teased and planted a kiss to the frightened boy's pale cheek. HN. Both boys looked toward the door to see Itachi standing there. Gara's eyes widened. Gara here's another secret for you, Naruto said softly into his ear. Meet Uchiha Itachi, S-class missing nin of Konoha, Mayaniki. Gara observed Itachi and the Uchiha did the same very briefly. Naruto sighed when neither said anything. Did I adopt a third quiet one? He pouted and crossed his arms in a huff. Gara blinked and stared at Naruto intensely for several moments. Damn seems I have. Oh well, more for me to love loudly anyway. The fear in Gara's eyes was apparent. Itachi however inclined his head. Gara-kun. The boy snapped his head to the side, observing Itachi and the bright red eyes. Thank you, Itachi-san, he said finally. Itachi was kept from responding by a loud pounding sound on his door. Oh shit. Naruto gasped jumping out of the bed and racing past Itachi in a flash. I'm so fucking late, he declared. Hold on. Itachi was already closing the bedroom door. Naruto skidded to a halt through the room, gasping as his foot stepped into a pile of ink and blood. Son of a bitch. He growled as the bottle spilled over onto the tatami mat. When Naruto finally pulled open the door he found Sakura glaring at him with a red face. What the hell do you think you're doing, Naruto? You were supposed to meet us at the bridge an hour and a half ago. She screeched. Appearing above her head was Kakashi and next to them was Sasuke, who glared. Yo, Naruto-kun, we got worried, said Kakashi his gray eye giving him a cursory glance and pausing on his soaked foot. What do you think you're doing? Sasuke asked as his eyes followed Kakashi's. What did you? Can't talk right now, be out in 10. Naruto slammed the door in their faces before he could be bombarded with any more questions. He grumbled and locked the door before hobbling through the room. Such a rude awakening, he
He thought darkly as he quickly piled everything onto the tatami mat and rolled it up and shoved it under the couch. The stains were splattered on the hardwood floor but he didn't care right now. Naruto hobbled to the bathroom to wash his foot. When he entered his room he saw Itachi sitting on the end of the bed and Gara still in the same place Naruto had left him. The shades were closed and the window was obviously locked. I apologize, oh Tuto. Nah, you were as exhausted as me. Naruto declared rushing for the first thing he could find. Freaking Sakura, she can be so damn loud. Gara observed him as he scrambled into his clothes and tied his hair back. See you guys later, oh, and Gara? Hm? You can be seen here, but Itachi can't, and help yourself to the apartment, food, clothes, or whatever. Also, please remind Konkuro that it's not very nice to pick on little kids. With a quick brush of his teeth he rushed out of the house to see Sakura glowing redder with her hands on her hips. Sasuke looking suspicious and Kakashi was leaning his back against the rail with a bored look. Sorry about that, I was painting last night, he lied. Kakashi arched his visible eyebrow. Oh really? Before or after? After, he answered bending down to fix the wraps around his ankles. That was really rude, Naruto. You could have at least invited us in. Sakura shrieked angrily. Instead we had to stand out here waiting for your lazy butt. Err. Yeah about that. Naruto was about to come up with another perfect lie when the door opened suddenly, causing Naruto to freeze and look over his shoulder at Gara, who stood there fully dressed in Naruto's clothes. He looked good in dark, loose-fitting khakis and a blue t-shirt. Hey, you look awesome in that. Naruto beamed and clobbered the redhead with a hug. Team 7 goggled at this. Sakura was gaping in shock while Sasuke's Sharingan flared briefly. Kakashi was a little confused by the inwardly wincing emotion. What had Naruto been doing? Really, it was none of Kakashi's business but why did he feel so weird? Gara stood there stiffly before letting his arms fall around Naruto. Thank you, he whispered into Naruto's ear, but everyone else heard it. Ah Panda-chan, stop it and go find your brat siblings. I'll kill Konkuro for you. You really don't have to, just yell at him. Gara's eye twitched. I don't yell. For me? Naruto pouted. Again the eye flickered. Fine. He left after that, making Naruto shrug his shoulders sweetly. So yeah, are we ready? Who is that? Sakura demanded. None of your business, Naruto retorted easily causing her to rock back in shock. But, it's none of your business who is in my apartment, Sakura-san and you'd do well to remember that. Naruto's blinding smile returned full on as he turned to his sensei. Sorry, I'm late. I was host to a gorgeous redhead for the night. He almost burst into laughter when Kakashi's bored eyes suddenly widened, Sakura squeaked, and Sasuke narrowed his gaze on him. I, er, wanted to let you all know that I was entering you into the Chunin exam. I kinda knew that, Naruto said sweetly not surprising Kakashi in the least. Anything else? Rest up because they start tomorrow at 8 o'clock, Kakashi said trying to gauge some information by Naruto's angelic face, but he came up with nothing. You guys may leave, Sasuke observed Naruto. That guy, Sabaku no Gara of Suna. The case cage's son, Kakashi said wondering why he was feeling jittery. He told himself that it was in concern for his orphan student. Naruto was so adorable and he had an innocent way about him and Kakashi couldn't let anyone do things they shouldn't. It made his Sharingan burn to think about it. Yup, Naruto said thinking suddenly that it was the one thing that Orochimaru did well for Gara, and he'd keep that in the timeline, but he wondered how he should go about the Hokage. He really didn't want that old man to die. He loved him like a grandfather. Sakura scowled at him. That's all you're going to say? What else do you want me to say? Naruto asked casually. Are you friends? Sasuke practically demanded. Naruto cocked his head to the side and smirked. Amongst other things, yeah. I'm going to have a late lunch at Ichiraku's, wanna come? He didn't let any of them respond to his announcement about Gara as he descended the steps to his place. He did however wonder why Kakashi's body language was so stiff. Did it actually bother him that Naruto had someone over to stay all night? Kakashi had never cared during his timeline and he was pretty sure that it had something to do with the change in atmosphere. He smiled slightly. He was afraid of fooling himself when he thought about Kakashi actually giving a damn, so he wasn't going to hold his breath one single bit until he had solid proof. His heart ached at his thoughts, but what choice did he have? Kakashi scratched his head as he followed Naruto. 
His curiosity was now immense as he realized that Naruto wasn't giving them any information and why did Kakashi need it. It wasn't as if it was any of his business. At first all he had cared about was Naruto's safety and when he hadn't shown up he'd gotten worried. Even Sasuke had shown a faint trace of emotion, and now the youngest Uchiha was practically glowing with anger. Hmm, interesting, Kakashi thought observing him. Sakura was asking about Naruto. Is he gay? She whispered curiously. I mean, not that I mind, but Naruto has always had a crush on me, right? Remember Sakura-san, the Naruto you knew before was a fake, Kakashi said softly. It looks like Naruto-kun has a lot of secrets that he wishes not to share with anyone. Sasuke crossed his arms and found his friend beaming at the ramen lady and asking for a double serving. Naruto-kun, I think we will join you, Kakashi said sitting but not ordering anything to eat. Ayame blushed madly when she saw him while Sakura scrambled to sit close to Sasuke, her eyes on Naruto the whole time. They were questioning, but one glare from Sasuke kept her curiosity abated. Naruto pretended he didn't see her questioning gaze and cheered at the old man when he promised to give him a double helping free of charge. Everyone was busy doing their own thing when Shikamaru's team approached. Ino practically fainted at her first sight of Naruto, but then she turned on Sasuke and her cheeks flushed radiantly, thus meaning Naruto was forgotten. Sakura growled, Ino pig, forehead girl. Sasuke bowed his head, kill me, Naruto. He whispered getting a sad look from the blonde in response. Choji grinned widely when he saw Naruto. Isn't he a cutie now? He asked placing a beefy hand on top of Naruto's blonde head. The small boy winced. Sometimes Choji didn't know his own strength. Shikamaru slouched and sighed. I already knew that, he said sliding an arm around Naruto and drawing him closer and out of Choji's not-so-soft pad. Team 7 received another shocked reaction when Naruto squeezed Shikamaru around the waist. Shika-chan, I've missed you, since when were they close? All three of them wondered at the same time. Nay, Naruto-kun, Ino had wedged in on the other side of Sasuke now and the raven-haired boy looked even more miserable. Sakura was fine by herself, but in the presence of Ino her anger problems grew. Kakashi had greeted Asuma who was chuckling at everyone's reaction to Naruto. He certainly has grown Kakashi, Asuma commented with a dry smile. What did you do, me? Kakashi asked incredulous and glanced sideways at his beautiful student who was engaged in a teasing conversation with Shikamaru and Choji. I didn't do a thing, he showed up like this one day and that was that. Hmm, Asuma said chuckling some more when he saw Kakashi's little Uchiha being harassed by two energetic girls. So Asuma-kun, what brings you here? Kakashi asked continuing to watch Naruto discreetly as he tugged at Shikamaru's shirt in excitement while talking animatedly. Kakashi quirked his lip at the way his little student was wrapping people around his finger without even knowing it. Was it just him or was Naruto entrancing to watch? Choji was snickering and looking from his friend to Naruto and back again. Ino and Sakura were still fighting over Sasuke, who was looking helpless. Well, I lost to Shikamaru in Shogi and promised to treat. I broke after the last barbecue and this was the cheapest place, Asuma grumbled as he hunched forward. Don't you know better than to bet in shogi when it's obvious you suck? Kakashi asked aloofly. I don't suck, I beat my dad all the time, Asuma said defensively. Your dad isn't Shikamaru, I thought I really had him this time. You always think you have him every time you play, Kakashi pointed out plainly. That's like me underestimating Naruto he said and he was glad that Naruto and the others were too deep in conversation with their neighbors to be paying any attention to him. Asuma chuckled roughly at him and Kakashi nudged him in the ribs. Stop that laugh, it's scary. Both of them let their eyes stray to Shikamaru and Naruto, not really knowing that they were thinking along the same terms. Naruto was flicking Shikamaru's nose to get a reaction, Choji was laughing while eating his appetizer chips he brought along and even Sasuke was smirking as Shikamaru simply lay with his head on the counter like he were going to fall asleep. Have any markers? Naruto asked innocently. I might, Choji said smirking. Nay, Naruto, Shikamaru groused. I think you are the only one he never says, troublesome, too, Asuma said smiling at their interactions. That's because I've worn my troublesome phrase out on you guys. Shikamaru said catching Naruto's hand gently and bringing it down to rest in his lap. Naruto stuck his tongue out and wiggled it playfully. 
Kakashi was really rather amazed at the way Naruto could capture anyone's attention and make them his friend. It showed the emotional empathy that Naruto possessed. Even Sasuke was a lot more open and dare Kakashi say it. Friendly, but he still couldn't help but wonder about the redhead boy that came out of Naruto's apartment. Their food was brought to them by Ayame who refused to look Kakashi's way. Playfully, Naruto nudged Kakashi. The silver-haired man rolled his good eye. Least it's not as bad as poor Sasuke-kun, Kakashi whispered, causing Naruto to glance over at his brother to see him deftly tuning the two girls out. Naruto had hoped Sakura would have learned better, but when she got around Ino competition became a bitch with them. But then again, Naruto and Sasuke had been just like that, his own fault of course. Yeah, not good, Naruto said back. Kakashi couldn't help it, his curiosity ate him to the point of being empty on the inside. How do you know Gara, Naruto? Naruto was aware of the discreet plea in his tone of voice. It was so soft and maybe even a little guilt-ridden. Why? He wondered. He has the one-tailed demon in him, Shukaku. How did you know? Kakashi asked keeping his tone quiet. A Jinchuriki always knows another. Will you buy it if I tell you demon intuition? No, Kakashi said flatly. Naruto chuckled. Didn't think so, he said quickly nibbling on a slice of pork and then taking a drink of his soda. No idea how to explain, Kaka-sensei, he admitted. I just knew and I offered him friendship because I know what he could do without someone in his life. That's what you were doing last night, wasn't it? Kakashi asked. Naruto blushed and ducked his head. Yeah, I've declared him as another brother. For some reason that was unknown to Kakashi he felt relief at hearing that. It was most likely because his student was way too young to be getting into relationships. A 12-year-old? Kakashi mentally sighed. It was also not exactly a bright thing to be so interested in a student's social life. He certainly didn't care about Sasuke's or Sakura's for that matter. Strange when you are, Naruto-kun. Naruto stuck out his tongue. Likewise Cyclops. Kakashi chuckled lowly and threw a glance over his shoulder at Asuma who was tapping his pack of cigarettes and obviously wondering if anyone would miss him if he stepped out of the restaurant to smoke. Let's go, no one will notice. No one? Naruto taunted playfully. No one except Naruto, because he notices everything, Kakashi corrected. Naruto giggled and nudged his sensei in the back. Go play, sensei. Kakashi's back was turned. But Naruto could tell he was chuckling silently because his shoulders shook a little. As Asuma and Kakashi walked out of the area Naruto made a mental note. He won't die while I'm here. A man like that didn't deserve death and Kakashi needed to keep some friends alive. He too had lost everyone and anyone dear to him. Briefly, Naruto allowed his thoughts to stray back to before they'd arrived at Ichiraku's ramen bar. Did Kakashi actually care or was he being a nosy sensei for his own perverted means? Again, Naruto was torn. Kakashi was one man that he was kind of scared to get close to, because in the future Naruto had loved him and he knew that the carefree acting man was far too gone inside of the war to love him back. It also didn't help that Naruto's beginning actions had caused Kakashi to see him as a little boy always. His extremely brief relationship with Kiba hadn't worked out because Naruto couldn't stop talking about Kakashi every time he opened his mouth. In the words of Shikamaru, very troublesome. His feelings were extending to now, with all these changes, Naruto selfishly hoped that Kakashi could one day see him for who he was and not for a child. Sasuke, seeing a free space, jumped at the chance to sit with Naruto. The girls moaned when he did and he glowered at them. Sasuke ni, Naruto teased nudging his shoulder. HN, he said going back to his ramen in peace. It was the nicest thing you could receive from an irritated Uchiha. Naruto counted himself lucky. Naruto was not surprised that Gara showed back up at his apartment that night. Smiling brightly, he hugged the redhead around the neck and kissed his cheek before dragging him into his apartment. Gara peered around. Where is Itachi-san? Planning my abduction, Naruto said with a slight smile. He saw Gara's confusion. Akatsuki, he said softly. There's quite a lot going on that a lot of people aren't aware of. Us Jinchuriki are going to be in danger really soon, he said and explained the whole network to Gara as he fixed some sandwiches and chips for them. You're not worried? Gara asked apprehensively. No, Itachi would never hurt us, Naruto ensured, we won't let it happen. This time, he added silently to himself. You really do like me, Gara said staring down at the food in shock. 
Naruto having taken a huge bite of his food swallowed and grimaced when it lodged in his throat. Of course I do, Panda-chan. Gara sighed but didn't comment on the nickname and this only made Naruto smile even brighter. Naruto tossed Gara some pajamas. Help yourself to the shower, Gara. Thank you, Gara said. Gara was a little worried about sleeping, but Naruto gently placed a hand on Gara's forehead right on top of the tattooed kanji for love. Sleep, Panda Chan, don't worry yourself. When the alarm went off at 6.30, Gara's eyes were automatically open and he gasped when he realized he was holding onto Naruto tightly. Chuckling, Naruto ruffled Gara's head. Morning cuddle bug, Gara's cheeks flushed as he unwound his arms and sat up. Naruto smiled and reached over, turning his alarm off and thanking it while hopping out of bed. After they dressed, Naruto wearing the first outfit that Itachi had given him, he tied his hair back and rushed out to fix a quick breakfast and then grabbed some of the survival rations from the cupboard for the forest of death. That wouldn't be until tomorrow afternoon, but Naruto didn't know if Gara would still be around or not. Gara took the offered breakfast and the rations but didn't question them as he put them in a pouch around his waist. Naruto also handed him a canteen of water and tightened his own. Never know, Naruto said, but the smile left his face as he thought about the forest of death and quickly turned away from Gara. Gara may not have been intuitive about emotions or people, considering his isolation, but anyone could tell when Naruto was having troubled thoughts because the beautiful smile would leave his face. They met Sasuke and Sakura at the bridge. Sasuke stiffened and Sakura frowned slightly. Naruto? Sakura queried. Naruto smirked. We ready guys? He asked when two familiar people slowly headed toward them or more specifically Gara. Tamari and Konkuro sported identical looks of bemusement. Tamari gazed over at Naruto and paused for a moment, her cheeks blushing slightly as she took him in. Sasuke frowned. Sakura scowled. I remember you two from yesterday picking on Konohamaru. Gara? Tamari asked carefully ignoring the pink-haired girl. Naruto leaned into Gara and looped his arm through the redheads with a smile. Hi there, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Err, what the hell are you doing with our brother, loser? Konkuro sneered. Sasuke's hand was immediately latched onto a kanai but before he could react, Gara stepped in. Konkuro, he hissed. I believe you owe them an apology like we discussed yesterday. Konkuro gulped loudly and shot Naruto a cold look as he bowed his painted face. Of course Gara, I apologize. He gave Sakura and Sasuke a glare of disdain. Tamari was more curious and confused than she was angry. If I ever hear you are being rude to Naruto or anyone he's friends with, you will be facing me. Got it, Konkuro? Tamari? Of course Gara, Tamari said uneasily. It's nice to meet you Naruto, who are your friends? My teammates, Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. Konkuro looked as though he wanted to say something scornful about Konoha's ninja but one dark look from Gara hushed him up. Temuri's gaze lingered on Naruto's close stature to her dangerous little brother. Don't fuck up, Gara warned. They all walked together, discomfort apparent in all but Gara and Naruto. Sasuke walked with Naruto who slipped his free hand around the Uchiha's forearm. Sakura was about to say something mean when Sasuke glared at her to keep her mouth shut. She huffed and crossed her arms, not understanding how Naruto was getting so much attention and affection from people, especially from Sasuke. What did he do that Sakura didn't? They entered the building where the first exam was going to be held and found their sensei waiting for them. Kaka sensei. Naruto cheerfully called out letting go of Gara and Sasuke. What are you doing here? He knew why, but it was like him to ask such a dumb question. To wish you luck, Kakashi said with an indented smile behind his mask. He was no longer bothered when he saw Naruto with Gara of the Sand. In fact, Kakashi felt that his judgment yesterday had been a little rude and out of character for him. Naruto's air of happiness was easily rubbing off onto him and he really hoped that Naruto passed the exams. Thinking back on it, Kakashi was sure that Naruto deserved it more than most, Sasuke included, because Naruto had pure intentions while Sasuke's were purely on revenge. Sakura wasn't ready, but Kakashi wouldn't tell her that. He thought that perhaps these exams may help her grow even if she failed. I'm glad you all made it. I didn't tell you before, but if one of you had backed out you'd have all had to. Sakura gasped, why didn't you tell us? Her eyes widened. Taking the Chunin exam is a decision you have to make yourself. 
You can't be forced or bullied into it by your fellow teammates. If you believed that you weren't ready for this then you probably weren't and you would be wasting everyone's time otherwise. He turned and held out the door. In you go. As they passed through his hand landed gently on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto's heart caught in his throat as he peered up at his sensei. Kakashi bent down so that his covered mouth was right on Naruto's ear and he could smell a soft citrus scent of shampoo from the boy's soft hair. Good luck, my little gaki. Sakura and Sasuke for once had identical expressions of bemusement. Naruto smiled sweetly. Thanks, Kaka-sensei, he said earnestly. When they entered and the door closed Tamari turned around. Was that your sensei? Yeah, Naruto said proudly. Kaka-sensei. What did he say, Naruto? Sakura asked. Nothing, Naruto lied making the pink-haired girl growl. Hitaki Kakashi, Konkuro said a little surprised. Yup, the one and only. I see, Tamari said slowly. Nothing else was able to be said about the matter as they were met with Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji. Ino and Sakura shot daggers at each other before Ino decided to try and throw herself on Sasuke only to wind up on the floor as he took a step back. Naruto chuckled and curled his arm around Sasuke drawing him closer. Only I can touch Sasuke-kun, he teased and got a growl from Ino. And maybe Haku too. Sasuke glared at Naruto but didn't comment outright. Naruto merely winked at him. Shikamaru sighed lazily. Nay, I woke up for this? How troublesome, hey Naruto. Shika-chan. Naruto squeezed him as Choji held out a bag of chips. No thanks, Choji-kun. Suit yourself. Gotta be ready for these exams, comfort food. You're always ready with comfort food, Ino put in. Choji shrugged his beefy shoulders. Naruto, who's your friend? Shikamaru asked looking over at Gara. Ooh, this is Sabaku no Gara of Suna. Naruto said pulling the redhead close. Gara this is Nara Shikamaru. Gara nodded but didn't speak. Shikamaru grunted. You like them silent, huh? What can I say? Naruto shrugged innocently. The silent ones seem to be just so cute, I can't help myself. He looked from Sasuke to Gara, and he was thinking about Itachi. Well, 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 what do we have here? There was a swooshing sound and a scent of wood mixed with something so familiar, along with the voice that was even more recognizable except it was younger. Naruto swung his head around Choji's large frame and saw Kiba standing there. Akamaru snuggled into his zip-up gray sweater. God, they both looked so much smaller, Naruto thought with a wide smile. Kiba-kun, Akamaru, he chirped. Naruto, Kiba gasped and nudged Choji out of the way to lean in close to the blonde until they were nose to nose. Akamaru began to lick Naruto's chin. Hmm, you're different, he said sniffing Naruto. You're not, Naruto teased and poked the boy in the nose. You're still tiny, he said grinning wolfishly. So is your doggy. Akamaru barked and Naruto scratched it behind the ear. Kiba pulled back with a smirk. Looks like our friendly rivalry hasn't changed much. Naruto stuck out his tongue and yelped when Akamaru tried to bite it, everyone but Gara and Sasuke laughed. He looks yummy, Choji commented as he grinned widely and rubbed his belly. Can I eat him? Kiba and Akamaru growled in sync with each other. Both their canines flashed as Choji chortled and took a step back. Easy now, I was kidding. Naruto tugged Kiba's unruly black hair getting his attention immediately. Yep, he's still the same Kiba, Naruto thought affectionately. NN Naruto-kun? Hinata appeared beside them and when Naruto glanced at her she flushed tomato red. Yo, Hinata-chan, he said kindly. How are you? She towed the ground and her opaque eyes moved away from his. Gee good, thank you. You? Splendid. You ready for the exam? Hinata bit down on her lip. Kiba nudged her. Hinata-chan, don't be so shy, he chastised playfully. Yes, I am, she squeaked. Shino was standing off to the side as mysterious and creepy as ever, but Naruto this time didn't miss a beat and greeted him too. I am surprised that you could remember me, Shino said monotonously. Of course, how could I forget? Naruto said kindly. I may look dumb, but I'm not. Well, that wasn't entirely true. In the past Naruto had forgotten that Shino existed, how mean was that? Naruto was determined to try and establish a connection with everyone. He wouldn't do to others what the villagers did to him. Ino snorted. Yeah right, she breathed out only to get glared at. 
Sakura was observing the interactions with Naruto and clearly noticed the affection and attention that he gathered from the rest of the Rookie Nine. She felt a little jaded and jealous. Sakura had always been on the popular side, rivaling Ino for the attention, but suddenly the dead last boy that Sakura had scorned for years was center stage and he didn't seem to know it. It angered her and hurt at the same time. She didn't understand it. How could this be? Kiba was still staring at Naruto. Sakura and Ino were talking quietly together and for once they weren't arguing. Since when did Naruto get popular? Ino hissed to Sakura. No idea, Sakura said crossing her arms. He's completely changed, still an idiot though. I don't know what anyone sees in him. Sure he can be nice, but he's too nice. Naruto pretended he hadn't heard that even though his chest ached slightly and his smile slowly began to dissolve from his face. However Sasuke, Kiba, Gara, and Shikamaru were never under any such orders to remain ignorant and when they witnessed that smile leave Naruto's face a lethal glare was sent their way. What did we say? Ino squeaked. It was all her. Her, I tell you. You had the same thoughts as I did. Sakura growled out. Th that wasn't. And nice, Aino-san, s Sakura-san, Hinata said hesitantly. Ino-san, I expected better of you, Shikamaru said darkly. Ino at least had the nerve to look ashamed however confused she was. Naruto tilted his head. What are you talking about? He feigned sweetly causing Kiba to snarl under his breath. He didn't want Sakura and Ino to get into too much trouble over him. But his innocent act seemed to rile up the boys even more for Sakura and Ino's mean words and yes, he may be 18, but they still hurt. In the academy, Kiba had been one of the dead lasts and with Naruto they often skipped class to run around Konoha together, but after they were separated into teams the two of them had stopped talking. It wasn't until he was about 16 that they had met together once again on equal footing and their relationship somehow sparked only to be cut down because Naruto's affections couldn't rise to love because of his Junin sensei. Kiba's expression softened. Nothing Naruto, he said sliding an arm around his shoulders. Nothing you need to worry about, he said shooting them cold looks. Ino frowned and she looked as though she were about to cry. Why do you care? You never did before. She pouted. What's it matter why? It matters that we do. Sasuke snapped at her causing Ino to look as though she were going to faint. Women are always so troublesome, Shikamaru groused shaking his head. As Sasuke glared at Sakura, the green-eyed girl ducked her head in shame. I'm sorry, I, I didn't, no. You didn't know you'd be overheard or you didn't know we would care? Shikamaru asked her with a slight frown. If you have something mean to say, why don't you say it to our faces instead of whispering where you think we can't hear you? Why Shikamaru, I think that's the most you've ever talked, Choji teased. Shikamaru grumbled but said nothing to that as he shoved his hands into his pockets. It was tense for several moments until Sakura turned to Naruto. I'm sorry, Naruto. For, being so mean, you'll have to prove it to him rather than use words, Kiba snapped sourly. Soke Kiba-kun, I'm used to it. It's just Sakura-san. It's how she always is, he attempted to placate, but again Naruto's words made things worse. He could see how depressed she felt now and Ino was wincing visibly. E.H., Naruto decided to hush, his skills at stopping fights were as bad as his genjutsu. Kiba wrinkled his nose, it's why they don't smell too pleasant. Naruto and his friends had noticed all the others in the room. Sasuke was looking each one of them over and getting a really good look at their forehead protectors. I've never heard of the sound, Sasuke whispered to Naruto. Naruto smiled grimly. No, you wouldn't, he whispered quietly. Sasuke leaned in. You sound as if you know more than you let on? How did he go about this? He wondered, but he didn't get a chance to voice his concerns because Rock Lee, Hayuga Neji, and Tenten just had to make their timely appearance. Naruto was actually relieved to have Neji's cold and scornful personality shot at them. It made for a good distraction. Sasuke was immediately put on edge by Neji who observed each one of them carefully with his white eyes. He sneered when he got to Hinata who shrank back behind Sasuke as though she were afraid of confrontation. Rock Lee, just like Naruto expected, attempted to challenge Sasuke only to be stopped by Neji. Their fates have already been decided Lee San, do not be a bother, he said emotionlessly. Tenten groused, we don't need to start fights, Lee Kun. I have declared that Uchiha Sasuke is my ultimate rival. 
I want to see that Sharingan and face off with my ultimate Taijutsu. Sasuke observed him critically, snorting at the obscene green spandex outfit. Naruto turned around and whispered, He's more powerful than he looks, Sasuke. Your eyes would enjoy his created moves. Neji having overheard snapped his head toward Naruto and narrowed his eyes. I had no idea the Chunin exam has sunk in so low they allow those unqualified to enter. Shut up, Kiba growled. You don't know anything about Naruto. The same applies to you as well, Neji said blankly. You should save yourselves the trouble and turn back now. Fate is a nasty thing, you can't change it. So says you, Naruto said softly. But fate is also a tricky little entity, wouldn't you agree, Neji-san? It is intelligent and it can change and make up its mind whenever it wants. You are a foolish child, Neji said coldly, with foolish dreams. Go back to your apartment, orphan. Kiba growled and made to jump but Naruto and Choji held him back as Sasuke and Gara stepped up in front of Neji. The Hyuga simply observed the both of them plainly as Sasuke's Sharingan flared to life. What was that? Neji cocked his head to the side. Revenge is your fate, not the Chunin exam and it's something you can't escape. He looked at Gara, whose green eyes had narrowed into cat-like slits. Tamari and Konkuro exchanged worried expressions as though Gara would kill the Hyuga right then and there. Naruto gently placed a hand on Gara's elbow. He's not worth it, Naruto whispered. Neji. Tenten scowled and whacked him on the shoulder. Stop being so rude. I'm so sorry guys, she said biting her lip. I'm Tenten, this is Rock Lee, and Hyuga Neji, we're a year ahead of you guys. Our sensei made a guy kept us back for extra training. Tenten San, show some decorum, stop talking to dropouts. Tenten's cheeks flushed and Lee gave Neji a sad look. Nice to meet you, Tenten. Naruto chirped happily. Neji needed a good beating to get it through his sealed head that fate wasn't all that it's cracked up to be. You too, Naruto-kun. Naruto snickered when he saw Rock Lee ignoring Neji's words and professing his love for Sakura who was scooting closer to Ino. Ew, your eyebrows, Sakura gasped. That green jumpsuit, she stressed horrified. I will fight for your ultimate love, Sakura-chan. I promise to protect you with my heart. Uh, I'd rather you not. Ino snickered. Poor forehead girl, she cooed. Sakura's cheeks couldn't have been more fired up. HMPH. Neji plucked Lee's collar and dragged him away. Let's go Tenten San, we have no time to waste with these. His eyes briefly pausing on Hinata who had managed to come out from behind Sasuke. Gara went back to observing everyone in Naruto's interactions and it was clear to him that there were very few pure people in the world. It was a dangerously rare thing and Naruto happened to be one of them. Kabuto finally made his grand appearance and flashed his information cards. When Sasuke asked about Neji and Rock Lee, Naruto cocked his head and smiled sweetly. How about you Kabuto, got a card with your information, he asked innocently. The silver-haired adult teenager laughed lightly. I'm more suited toward medical ninjutsu, but this doesn't mean I can't fight. Although I have failed the Chunin exam seven times now. This earned shocked expressions from everyone but Naruto, who observed him carefully. They were introduced to his team which consisted of two other ninjas that Naruto knew didn't belong to the leaf. Akado Yoroi and Sarugi Masumi. Two ninjas that were well over 20 and had abilities as sinister as Kabuto's true personality. But Naruto wasn't going to be so cold and rude toward him. Kabuto was a strange person. He was severely loyal to Orochimaru, but Naruto was going to take a guess that he was loyal because of the circumstances. Kabuto didn't have anyone else and Orochimaru gave him a good supply of innocence to work on. A crooked and twisted means, but one all the same. Naruto sighed inwardly. Everyone had a corrupt side to them. If you were a shinobi you became corrupted on your first kill. That's the way it is. The bandaged sound ninja was eyeing Sasuke like a piece of meat. Naruto was trying to put a name to him but couldn't. He knew he was one of Orochimaru's, obviously, and he recognized the other two easily because it had been the female nin's doing that caused Sakura's hair to become short and to make her take life a little more seriously. Deftly he reached out and tugged on Kabuto's elbow. Yes, Naruto-kun? He asked. Who is the bandaged guy staring at Sasuke? Kabuto's gaze briefly fell on the sound ninja, he didn't even use his cards to identify him. Kinuta Dosu. He's 14 and from what I've heard a very competent ninja, but he does have a slight problem with arrogance. 
His two teammates, Suchi Kin and Abumi Zaku, they use sound type jutsu and are not to be underestimated. I never thought for a second they would be, Kabu kun. Kabuto chuckled. Is that what you're calling me now? He asked wide eyed. I call everyone something, Naruto said cheekily. You're a very interesting little shinobi, Kabuto expressed, and Naruto wasn't sure if the man's smile was honest or not. He wondered what kind of impression he would make on Kabuto now that he wasn't so overbearing. Morino Ibiki made his appearance. The slashes across his face caused several genin to take a step backwards. The same greetings and explanations were applied as Naruto had remembered except the seating situation where Naruto was planted in the very back by the window and his only neighbor was a grass nin that Naruto couldn't remember the name of. Now, Naruto was never a child prodigy. He wasn't like Neji nor was he anything like Sasuke or Shikamaru and he wasn't going to pretend to be. Even now, with Naruto's 18 years of age, he wasn't a book smart shinobi. Everything he gathered over the years had been through hard work and a whole lot of struggle. There were plenty of things people understood better than him and he knew that even now, Naruto wouldn't be able to answer any of these questions. Junin level they were and he may be a Junin, but Naruto didn't grasp things by reading a book on theory. He had to have it beaten into him until there was no way he would ever forget. So, how did Naruto beat this test with cheating? He knew the focus of the test now, back then he hadn't understood but he still didn't have very much to cheat with. He didn't have eyes made of sand, or the Sharingan and the Byakugan or the brain that Sakura had. Nor did he have Kiba's pup to tell him the answers. He had none of that, however, he did have one thing that no one else in this room had besides perhaps Gara. But the redhead didn't dare take that step ever again. Naruto had the demon in him, a very intelligent demon for that matter and it just so happened that Naruto knew exactly how to control his demon while in its seal, for the most part. And so when Ibiki told them to start, Naruto slouched back in his seat and gazed at the confusing questions on the paper before narrowing his eyes and signing one-handed jutsu to slip his mind into the very core of the seal. The damp, drippy cell stood before Naruto who raised his head and opened his eyes to peer up at the sinister grin of the Kyubi trapped behind the cage. Yo, Q, my host, you finally figured out I was here, he growled. Have you come to release me? Hell no, I came to get some information out of you and you're going to supply it for both of our lives depend on this. If I die you die too, he said causing the fox to snarl nastily. What do you want? Chakra reserves? I can do that. No, not yet, I need the answers to this test. How trivial. Trivial to you, but damn well important nonetheless. How would I know the answers? You are an entity Q. You have all the information you will ever need stored inside of you. I've done plenty of research on you and the other tailed beasts. Surely you know by now that I'm not the same kid that housed you for a decade? I am vaguely aware of the difference, Kayubi said factually. I just don't know why it's different. But if you insist on using me for such pathetic means that have no interest to me then so be it. Oh and remember Q, you give me the wrong answers and I will make your life so fucking miserable you will beg for death. Kayubi blasted his shoulders against the sealed cage but wound up being knocked back by the force. Naruto chuckled, that isn't going to work. Very well, I'll comply, the nine-tailed demon hissed. Good, all you have to do is see through my eyes and answer those little questions. It's simple really. The room in which all of the sensei were put in to watch and wait for their students to finish the test was buzzing with excitement. In the corner Asuma, Kakashi, and Kurenai were sitting together staring at a set of nine screens. There were cameras all over the examination room and it observed each student carefully and in full color. Asuma smirked when he saw Shikamaru answer them and then roll his eyes lazily and slump his head on the desk to fall asleep. Shikamaru never fails to amaze me, he said softly. He observed Ino and Choji briefly and saw Ino doing a mind transfer before doing the same to Choji and giving him the answers. Kurenai was watching Hinata answer them easily. Akamaru barked out the answers for Kiba and Shino used his bugs. They do have very interesting means, she said sitting on the edge of the sofa. Kakashi, however, wasn't paying attention to Sakura's studious nature or Sasuke's intelligent use of his Sharingan. He was looking at Naruto who relaxed back into his seat and closed his eyes briefly. What was he going to do? Kakashi asked. As strong as he was physically, Kakashi knew without being mean that Naruto was not a book smart shinobi. It wasn't an insult, but a simple fact. 
Kakashi didn't want Naruto to be book smart. Personally he thought it would take away from the boy's enchanting personality. But then what happened next caused Kakashi to jerk reflexively. Naruto, Asuma and Kurinai took their eyes off their students and gasped when they saw Kakashi's smallest student. His fingers grew long and sharp nails and his mouth began to shift until it was filled with sharp dangerous canines, and when the boy's eyes opened they were blood red with black slits. He's using the nine tails, Asuma whispered making sure to keep his mouth covered so no one overheard him. How is he controlling it without his mind going crazy? He's Naruto, Kakashi answered softly watching Naruto's sharp claws pick up the pencil and scribble the answers down. But I think he's using the Kayubi's intellect to get the answers. Kurinai frowned. I didn't know you had taught him so well, Kakashi-san. I didn't teach him this, Kakashi said. In fact, there seems to be a natural trend in Naruto's sudden growth, he confessed. One day he was well below a genin status and the next day he was showing the aptitude of a junin. A junin? I don't believe that. I think you're embellishing a bit, Kakashi-san, Kurinai chastised with a slight smile. I wouldn't be so sure, Asuma rebuked for Kakashi. My Shikamaru has that same aura about him. He comes off as a dead last genin but in reality, his mind is unparalleled to any I have ever known. His skills are chunin but his mind, it's that of a junin. Naruto is not a book smart boy. Kakashi voiced his thoughts factually as he smiled when Naruto's eyes reverted back to a beautiful blue and the nails disappeared along with the canines. He's more of a physical boy and very underestimated. I think you should focus more on Uchiha Sasuke, Kakashi-san. He's the star of your team like Hinata is of mine. The elders on the council will want you to take the revered clan's last ninja and shift him into perfection. It's why he was assigned to you. Kakashi frowned but didn't reply to that as he continued to watch Naruto. He wouldn't do what anyone on the council wanted him to do. He was never a man who solely played by the rules. It was laughable. Asuma smiled slightly. Uchiha Sasuke has way more to learn than the cute little blonde. But the Uchiha doesn't house the demon, Kurinai said a little coolly. Kakashi visible eye twitched. I don't care about the demon, Kurinai-san. Asuma's smile widened. What do you care about? Kakashi looked over at his friend. Kurinai was frowning at them but the silver-haired Sharingan user couldn't help but wonder what Asuma was getting at. He turned back to Naruto's camera and never answered Asuma's question, especially aloud. Sasuke may hold a lot of promise, but Naruto was true at heart. Sakura with her brain would make a good teacher in Kakashi's professional opinion, but she still had a long way to go before she could reach that point. Kakashi wasn't trying to play favorites, but he couldn't help that his mind and eyes kept going over to his little Jinchuriki student. The most confusing and interesting shinobi Kakashi had ever met, his little blonde Gaki. When it was over, Naruto didn't feel like going to Ichiraku to celebrate, nor did he feel like going to train, which he would have done before traveling back in time. Right now, his exuberant energy was gone, leaving only the sense of a dying spirit. Outside in the summer sun, Naruto collapsed under the maple and drew his legs up to his chest. He closed his eyes. How did he stop Sasuke from getting the curse seal? He wasn't sure if he would be enough to stop Orochimaru. He couldn't go telling anyone in fear of him knowing too much already. Scowling, Naruto tugged on the ends of his hair. Naruto-kun? Naruto felt his chest tighten when he saw Kakashi standing there looking very concerned. Are you alright? Naruto bit down on his lip. I'm fine, he lied softly. To confess his secrets to this man was definitely a bad idea. It wasn't that he didn't trust Kakashi to do the right thing, but he didn't trust Kakashi when it came to letting him get closer. His heart ached and it was no secret that his feelings were stronger than ever before. He shuddered at that. Kakashi chuckled. That's my line, Naruto-kun, he said sitting in front of his student. What makes my usually cheerful student so upset that he wants to cry? He asked and tapped Naruto's cute nose playfully. He watched the boy blink and then wrinkle his nose before yelping, I don't want to cry. Okay, maybe he did a little because of the bind he was in. He didn't want to lose Sasuke, especially now. He had never been so close to the Uchiha before as he was now and to lose him would be devastating. Oh really? Kakashi asked softly. Why don't we try speaking the truth, Naruto-kun? I was thinking. About? The next exam. Kakashi sighed. I'm getting nowhere am I? Not really, Naruto answered. 
Look Kaka-sensei, I'm fine, really. He stood and dusted his pants off. Thanks for pretending to care, it means a lot. Kakashi frowned when the little fox host disappeared. Pretend? Why did Naruto believe he was pretending? There was something off about Naruto, Kakashi decided. He may be fooling others, but Kakashi was tired of being made into an idiot and he would figure out Uzumaki Naruto if it killed him. His little gaki wasn't going to run off out of nowhere and leave him hanging. It didn't take long for Kakashi to find Naruto. They were near the old training grounds, Area 7, and Kakashi couldn't help but feel a little confused as to why Naruto would try and get away from him by coming all this way. What was going on in his mind and why did it hurt that Naruto didn't want to be near him? Naruto, he called out sharply causing the boy to freeze in place. Naruto peered up at him with apparent surprise. It wasn't often that Kakashi got sharp with anyone, no matter who they were. What did I do? Resisting the urge to smile at the innocent question, Kakashi glared instead and spun Naruto around by his shoulders. I have been nothing but excruciatingly patient with you, Naruto-kun, he began softly. I have overlooked all the odd things that you've been doing and saying for a chance to let you tell me these things yourself. But I'm tired of you running away, no, tired is being kind. I'm sick of it and I will have no more of it. Naruto's jaw dropped and his head spun. You couldn't understand, Kaka-sensei, he said quietly. Try me, Naruto-kun, Kakashi requested softly. I swear to all the gods of heaven, hell, and earth that you can trust me. Naruto closed his eyes, his heart racing so fast that he felt nauseous and it was a wonder that he didn't get sick. Kakashi's request made him want to give in, but he was scared, he should talk with Itachi before revealing his secrets. But his heart desired to give in, to tell Kakashi the truth. He selfishly wanted Kakashi to see him for him and not a child. Ugh, how did things get so complicated? Before, Naruto had been able to hide his feelings, he was an adult, he should be able to keep them under wraps and not act like a childish, lovesick fool. He inhaled sharply when Kakashi's fingerless gloved hands cupped his cheeks. Naruto. Kakashi's voice made Naruto's skin shiver slightly and when he opened his eyes he found out why. He was exactly three inches away from Kakashi, who had both of his eyes exposed. Kakashi had gotten down on his knees so that they were perfectly level. Do you have this much mistrust in me? Kakashi asked sadly. It was the first time that Naruto had ever seen Kakashi's Sharingan so up close before. The vertical scar that went from the top of his brow to the middle of his pupil and down into his cheek was traced by Naruto's eyes before he hesitantly brushed a finger along the scarred skin. Naruto smiled when Kakashi shivered a bit at the touch. I trust you, he said, thinking about how to word it right, to always do the right thing or what you believe is right. Kaka-sensei. There is no one else quite like you and I doubt there ever will be, and that's where we come to a head, he confessed. I'll see you after the second exam, Kaka-sensei. Don't worry yourself so much. Namikaze Naruto is just fine. It was with that final remark that Naruto used Shunshin to disappear in a puff of smoke. Kakashi sank down onto the ground, a massive amount of confusion, more so than when Naruto had predetermined Zabuza and Haku's fate settled over him and it began to gnaw and chew at the very core of his brain and thumping heart. He rubbed his masked mouth. Namikaze, huh? Kakashi said to the open air. Minato's boy. He'd known that deep down, really he had, but he'd allowed it to go over his head on purpose. His former sensei had been like a god to him and it was painful to think about so he always allowed it to slip his mind. No wonder you're so beautiful, he continued to talk to himself, and mysterious, but you're twelve. So why is it that I feel like this? He questioned staring up at the endless white clouds. The breeze ruffled him and he felt sickened with himself as a lot of thoughts came over him. I'm attracted to a twelve-year-old. He choked at that and shook his head. How pathetic. That's all for now if you enjoy then please like share and do comments.